45 okay. minutes. <coughs> Good evening. I will call this meeting of the February 15th, 2024 Planning Commission for the City of Santa Cruz to order. Could we have a roll call vote? Commissioner Dan? Here. Gordon? Kennedy? Here. McKelvey? Here. Paul Hamas? Here. Thompson? Here. Conway? Here. Thank you. Good evening and welcome. Uh, this is my first meeting serving as chair this round, and I'd like to take the opportunity to thank Commissioner Kennedy for his service as chair and especially for sharing his glee as housing projects got approved. Um, I've appreciated how you celebrate every unit and especially every single affordable unit. Also, it looks to be a busy year ahead, and I hope community members continue to participate and provide lively comment um, to the policies and projects that will come before the commission this year. In order to facilitate the public process, I intend a formal format for the commission meetings. And to that end, I'd ask that all questions and comments from commissioners, they're all welcome, but I ask that you wait to be recognized by the chair before speaking and remind you that commission meetings are not the time for dialogue with the public, although you are always welcome to put any public questions on the floor during commission deliberation. Um, also, hearing public comment is an important role of this commission, and everyone who wants to, to will get a chance to speak, generally for up to three minutes. Your comments are welcome and will be heard whether you are confident and experienced at public speaking or if this is your first time and you're nervous. Audible expressions of support and disagreement do not further public participation. And for this reason, I don't intend to tolerate them during the meeting. Thank you for respecting everyone's participation in the process. Um, and with that, um, do we have any statements of disqualification? No, I'll mention I received one ex parte email at like 4.45 and just forwarded it on to staff. It wasn't very exciting. Great. Thank you. And uh, we'll now open oral communications. Um, this is the portion of the agenda in which anyone, any member of the public would like to speak to the commission about items that are in our purview but that are not on tonight's agenda. Uh, you're invited to come and speak. If you're speaking to tonight's agenda, we'll have a space for that as well. Um, it, is anybody here to speak to something not on tonight's agenda? Great. Welcome. We appreciate it if you tell us who you are. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Alberto Lustre with the uh, Northern California Carpenters Local 505. And I'm here to speak about the new development coming to the uh, city as overall. Uh, it seems that a lot of the projects coming into the city I don't have any, they don't have any labor standards as far as healthcare, apprenticeship, local hire, and a livable wage. Um, earning a livable wage ensures that our citizens can afford rent, can live in the city. It seems that about 80% of the people building the projects or more, they're out of Santa Cruz. They're not locals. They're bringing people out of state, out of, out of different counties, i seen, uh, by walking jobs, i seen people getting jobs coming all the way from San Diego for paying jobs. How can you afford paying jobs? How much are we paying those people? How come our locals can do it? And that's a question. Also, they don't provide any health care. And what happens to the, to the construction workers or anybody that's trying to, any construction workers, they don't have health care. Who pays for the health care? Our citizens do. Apprenticeships. We're not promoting any type of apprenticeship. What, what, what are we going to do if we don't promote apprenticeship? What kind of happen to our risk youth, people being at risk, being on the streets, if they don't got no, no, no way to survive? They don't get a chance. Also, minorities, women, they don't get a chance. The trades are the last resource for people that maybe couldn't make it to school or have a hard time in school. Uh, so I encourage you to ensure that when somebody comes into a project, ask them, please, get some area standards in there. We need those area standards for our citizens. Commuting. I commuted myself for four years, 
all the way to South San Francisco, waking up at three in the morning every day. There's plenty of projects here, and about, like I said, 80% of them, they don't have any standards. Why should I be traveling all the way down to San Francisco? I, I don't think that's fair. I think we need to do something as, as, as a community, as, as part of the planning. I, I've been to so many city um, planning commissions, commissioners, and they tell me, hey, you know what? Planning is not part of planning. Labor is part of planning. Who's going to build it? Where are we going to get the people? So I, I ask, please, ask for area standards, a legal wage, health care, apprenticeship, and local hire. We need our locals not to move away. A lot of people are getting pushed away from here all the way to Los Banos, Fresno. They can afford living in the area. Thank you for your time. Thank you. With that, we have um, approval of the minutes of February 1st, 2024. I'll move to approve the minutes. A second. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Those are approved. Tonight's public hearing involves a proposed hotel at 302 to 328 Front Street uh, with a number of requested permits listed on the agenda and will also be covered um, by the staff presentation. With that, could we hear from the staff? Good evening, Thank Commissioners. Uh, Ryan Bain, Senior Planner. So before us tonight, um, we have a proposal for the Cruise Hotel. In terms of location, um, the project involves six parcels total um, located at the northeast corner of Front and Laurel um, with uh, Front Street to the west, you have the river to the east, some development that's occurring to the north, and then Laurel Street and the bridge to the south. Um, through the parcels and the San Lorenzo River, um, through the parcel are by the applicants, are owned by the applicants and contain the building and parking lot occupied by the Santa Cruz uh, Community Credit Union. Um, the other three parcel, parcels are owned by the city of Santa Cruz, um, with the project contingent upon the acquisition of two of those parcels, and um, one of those would remain um, under the ownership of the city of Santa Cruz and contain um, what would, uh, we'll get to is the uh, Maple Alley passageway. So the proposal uh, involves um, demolition of the commercial building that I had mentioned and construction of, an, of a new um, six-story hotel with 232 rooms, three floors of underground parking, uh, ground floor retail, um, banquet and conference space, um, a restaurant, bar, cafe, and then amenities um, such as a gym, spa, and a rooftop um, pool and bar area. The general plan um, for the majority of the project site where the building is proposed has a general plan use designation of RVC, which is Regional Visitor Commercial, um, and it's also in the downtown um, Santa Cruz area of the RVC section. Um, that section does uh, designation emphasizes a mix of uses such as office and retail uses, residential and mixed-use developments, restaurants, and visitor attractions. Um, the proposed use of the parcel as a hotel is consistent with the intent of, of this designation and the area of the project on the city-owned land east of the building up to the River Rock that is proposed to be filled and landscaped with outdoor amenities has a land use of natural area or NA. Um, this designation provides for land that should remain in an undeveloped state to provide for habitat protection, public safety, or public recreation. So um, with, with public creation, public recreation um, allowed. It should be noted that the downtown plan and the San Lorenzo Urban River Plan call for publicly accessible outdoor extension areas uh, connecting the development to the river walk in this area um, consistent with this land use designation. And that's part of the project. Um, the, the project is also consistent with many general plan policies um, relating to visitor serving uses, alternative transportation, open space access, and downtown area development. Um, in the staff report, there's, I listed quite a few uh, of those policies, um, and I just pulled out a, just a handful of them 
um, that are applicable. So new development adjacent to the San Lorenzo River includes patios overlooking the river, enhanced connections to the levee trails and other design features that's being incorporated as part of this project. Um, again, encouraging buildings to be oriented towards sidewalks, public plazas, walkways, or rivers, and to include features such as public benches and natural seating areas, um, creating pedestrian-friendly frontage and streetscapes, streetscapes and attractive pedestrian-oriented areas, and supporting development and expansion of businesses that make a balanced contribution to cultural, envir environmental, and economic health of the city. So these are all applicable to this hotel project. Um, a few more revitalizing the riverfront area. This, this is a big part of the project, uh, encouraging the development of facilities that would accommodate conferences and conference goers in conjunction with existing or new hotels. So this hotel also has a banquet area and uh, conference rooms. Um, attracting a top-end full-service hotel to expand and improve the year-round conference segment of the tourism market, um, providing for the development of supporting land uses adjacent to retail shopping areas, um, while assuring protection of existing residentials. So the hotel will be certainly supporting um, the whole, all the downtown businesses nearby and maintain and enhance the recreational value of the San Lorenzo River. So those are all, all part of this project. Um, the project is also located in what is uh, the San Lorenzo Urban River Plan, um, which provides a framework to implement the community's vision to enhance um, the river area. Um, the project's proposed building design and open space improvements adjacent to the river, river rock are consistent with, with a lot of these um, slurp policies. So improving the scenic and recreational value of the riverfront, public access, um, the urban and neighborhood interface with the, with the river, um, incorporating the river into the surrounding ur urban fabric, um, and then in terms of Front Street, requiring new development projects to incorporate design features that encourage active engagement with the river walk, is filling adjacent to the river walk and landscaping um, and physical access to the river walk. So those are all components uh, of this uh, proposed application. Um, as I mentioned, it's also uh, located, obviously, in the downtown and the downtown plan. So the downtown plan um, applies and the policies apply to this project. And uh, the project is consistent with the goals and policies of the development in the downtown plan. Um, the plan has what are called first principles, um, which is kind of an overarching goals for the development in this area. So talk about form and character, building height, accessibility, open spaces, pedestrian, bike, and transit access are all part of that. <coughs> so the project uh, implements these principles um, and strategies in several ways. Um, I mean, the building has its own unique character while still maintaining consistency with the design standards and guidelines in the downtown plan. Um, the building height is consistent with um, the additional height zone B and the other surrounding um, projects in the vicinity. It provides a visitor-serving hotel, which will in turn support other local businesses, such as restaurants and retail in the downtown. Uh, and it creates a strong linkage to the river by having the restaurant bar and banquet uses on the east side of the building oriented uh, toward the San Lorenzo River. Um, also, the site lay, lays out and enhances pedestrian and bicycle usage with outdoor stairway and new accessible pathways connecting Front Street to the River Walk as part of the, the Maple Alley passageway. Um, an additional height request is um, being requested as part of this application, and the downtown plan um, has two additional height zones. This is additional height zone B. Um, this is mainly the properties between Front Street and the San Lorenzo River um, from Soquel to Laurel Street. Uh, this general starting, oh, where is it? Starting from here, going all the way up to Soquel, is uh, additional height zone B. Uh, allows an increase in building height from 50 to 70 feet um, with a recommendation from the Planning Commission and approval by the City Council uh, and when it meets certain specific criteria. And so uh, the application includes a request to increase the building height to 70. Um, so in addition to meeting the specific development criteria detailed in the downtown plan standards, um, the with the additional, there are some overarching city objectives that are required as part of um, the additional height request. So, um, let's see here. 
So the, the proposal meets these objectives as follows. The additional height to 70 feet allows the building to retain a form that provides architectural articulation as well as provide publicly accessible open space and access uh, from Front Street to the Riverwalk. Um, the additional height allows for 116 more hotel rooms than would be created under a project that only met the 50-foot um, base height. So this provides more visitor serving accommodations and more positive uh, economic benefits to the downtown. Um, and also, with additional hotel rooms, it provides and generates um, additional uh, TOT tax. Uh, it provides important conference and meeting room space, as well as restaurant and retail space in a location adjacent to the Riverwalk and walkable to many businesses in the downtown, generating economic and social activity in, in the downtown area, specifically in this area. Um, let's see. The building follows development standards, um, which are intended to promote the appearance of uh, multiple building rhythms at ground, middle, and upper levels. So it doesn't look like a, a large monolithic building, and so they've done a good job of that in their design. Um, the parcel furthest north, as I mentioned, will remain owned by the city, but will improve with a 50-foot wide public paseo, um, which is considered the, the Maple Alley Passageway, which is connecting Front Street to Riverwalk. And that will be designed, constructed, and maintained um, by the hotel uh, while remaining under city ownership. Um, the proposed extension areas include amenities such as outdoor dining adjacent to the proposed restaurant and bar space, as well as an event lawn adjacent to the banquet and ballroom, which connects this space uh, to the Riverwalk. And with the hotel qualifying as non-residential project and requesting additional height, the project will be required to pay an in lieu a public benefit fee of at least uh, $5 per square foot for any floor area occurring above that 50-foot height, um, which is estimated to be approximately uh, $227,000. That will be going toward uh, affordable housing fund. Um, the downtown calls for rooftops um, to be fully designed and creatively integrated into the function of the building. Um, the project does, has designed a rooftop amenity area that includes three separate pools, a uh, lounge area as well as bar, food prep kitchens, and a bathroom. Um, as proposed, the rooftop bar and all these structures meet the requirements set forth in the downtown plan, including height, setback, coverage, and integrated design. Uh, in addition to the roof amenities, the, the roof does house also some screened mechanical penthouses and for the elevators, stair housing, solar panels, et cetera, that exceed height, um, which is allowed by our zoning code. And it's actually, I should note that it's that those type of mechanical equipment rooms are not um, considered as part of the rooftop amenity um, and are not limited. But as, as proposed, the project um, meets all of the, the height, setback, and percentage of uh, rooftop area um, in terms of uh, the uh, rooftop amenities. So in terms of the entitlements that are being considered as part of this application tonight, um, uh, there's a demolition, non-residential demolition for the um, demolition of the, of the existing building, a heritage tree removal permit um, for several trees, uh, boundary adjustment for the um, um, for combining the lots, uh, <coughs> coastal permit, special use permit, administrative use permit, design permit, and a revocable license for outdoor extension areas. So as I mentioned, um, with the demo permit, um, the existing structure was built in 1978. Um, it is not listed as historic and is, is not eligible for listing for the state, uh, national, or city historic uh, building survey. Um, in terms of uh, the boundary adjustment, the project site is comprised of five lots, not including the city-owned lot that will remain on its own. Um, and th which this will be consolidating in into one lot through a sequential uh, lot line adjustment. The merger includes combining three privately owned properties, which would be totaling um, approximately 23,000 square feet, along with the two city owned parcels, which are about 9,000 square feet. So the resulting lot uh, meets the minimum 5,000 square foot uh, lot size, and new development with an FAR of 4.77 meets the, the uh, 5.0. Uh, FAR allowed in, in the uh, general plan designation. Um, the proposed project does require a coastal permit um, because it's located within the coastal zone overlay. Uh, and there's also a sliver of it that's also um, 
covered by the Shoreline Protection Overlay District. So um, as proposed, the project is consistent with applicable policies of the local coastal program, uh, which seeks to minimize the impact of development on coastal resources and provide visitor serving uses, such as a hotel um, for this area. The city, uh, the city, the Coastal Commission staff and applicant have been working together uh, on this project over the last year plus. And the Coastal Commission has indicated that there will be certain requirements regarding low-cost uh, visitor accommodations. So um, there, these discussions are continuing, and we're working toward trying uh, meeting the coastal requirements. Um, but in addition to the numerous public access enhancements that will be provided as part of this project, including the Maple Alley, Path Maple Alley Passageway, the river rock improvements, and the outdoor extension areas, the applicants are proposing to address uh, this coastal act and LCB policy with the following measures which have been memorialized in the conditions of approval. So they're looking at contributions to Santa Cruz Hostel Society, to the Boys and Girls Club, um, providing tower viewers for visitors to view the river habitat, free bike rentals, um, free public Wi-Fi, um, family suites, um, community days for local nonprofits to have access to the rooftop facilities, and then just some of the general amenities like restrooms, bar, restaurant services that will remain publicly accessible during operating hours. Um, also, a design permit is involved as part of this uh, application. Um, here's a looking at, at a basic site plan. Uh, the site is generally flat along Front Street and Laurel. Um, there is the San Lorenzo Levee, which slopes up to the east, um, up to the which slopes up to the river walk. Um, the project proposes to fill um, the city-owned property between the east side of the new building and the levee and create a public accessible outdoor extension area uh, that con connects to the river walk. So we have outdoor seating um, and flexible lawn area all here that will be uh, in the fill area. Well, there's three levels of below grade parking, um, which will extend approximately 30 feet below the existing grade. Uh, which will park 214 cars by way of a valet system that incorporates vehicle lifts and shuttles to park and retrieve those vehicles. Um, vehicular, ac vehicular access to the hotel will be off of Front Street. Um, this is where the Porta Cochere is, so that's where uh, everyone, uh, anyone coming to the hotel will approach through the Porta Cochere. Um, the main hotel lobby entry, which is right here next to the Porta uh consists of a grand entry that leads to the second floor um, lobby area. The front street level also contains bike parking, um, hotel administrative offices, as well as commercial retail spaces um, that fronts both Front Street and the Maple Alley. Um, and then there's also um, on the corner here facing the Laurel Street and front intersection is a cafe, a coffee bar, commercial space. The second floor plan, which has a lot of the hotel amenities, um, includes the main hotel lobby, um, bar, restaurant, meeting rooms, and banquet and ballroom area. Um, there's approximately uh, 6,700 square feet of banquet meeting room space um, with two ballrooms totaling um, approximately or I should say 3,500 square feet of meeting rooms. Let me get that straight, sorry. <laughs> Approximately 6,700 square feet of banquet meeting room space is proposed with two ballrooms and five meeting rooms totaling about 3,200 square feet. So they'll be able to have conferences, weddings, et cetera. Uh, it'll all be uh, available um, and be able to provide that, that kind of space for those types of events. Um, the spaces can accommodate meetings and banquets up to about 350 people uh, if fully occupied. Uh, let's see, here's the Laurel Street elevation. Um, so basically levels three through six contain hotel rooms, the portion of the third and fourth floor containing a spa and fitness room. Uh, in regards to parking, um, we have our, we have a, a city council resolution that was adopted uh, not too long ago um, that defines the vehicle and bike parking requirements for all the land uses in the downtown area. So hotels um, by resolution are required to provide uh, 0.25 spaces per room. 
Um, so with 232 rooms, that's 58 spaces that are required for the hotel use. Um, the project is providing 214, uh, 214 parking spaces. Um, and as I mentioned, it's going to be an automated uh, parking uh, solution that uses lifts to park and retrieve vehicles. Um, in terms of uh, bike parking, they're, they're required to supply a total of five class one and 42 class two, and they're providing 68 class one and 56 class two. So they're well exceeding the municipal code requirements for bike parking. Um, in terms of offsite improvements, um, they'll be providing uh, new sidewalks, um, which will be expanding in width, so 12 foot along Front Street, eight foot along Laurel Street, uh, new street lights, um, as I mentioned, the Maple Alley pedestrian bike connection, the Riverwalk levee, um, new street trees, uh, directional curb ramp uh, installed at Front Street and Laurel, an extension of the Riverwalk along Laurel to, intersection, to the intersection, and then all utilities in the, that will be undergrounded. Um, so Maple Alley, as I had mentioned earlier, um, provides a direct pedestrian and bike connection between the downtown um, Front Street, essentially, and the Riverwalk. So the plaza is a, is a public space with movable and amphitheater seating to provide space for planned and improvised gatherings adjacent to the hotel retail space. It's, uh, the plaza is connected to the Riverwalk via an accessible pathway and stair through slope terraces and planted with trees and landscaping that you can kind of see here. So this is Front Street, and this is how we'll access the Riverwalk here. Um, at its connection with the Riverwalk, the, the path widens to provide bike parking and sculptural seating element with the views of the river. So this, as I mentioned, this will be de um, constructed, designed, constructed, and maintained um, as by, by the hotel, but will remain owned um, by the city, and there'll be an agreement that will be developed uh, as part of how it's how all of this is used. Um, the proposed project includes, as I, as I had mentioned, the proposed project includes a property that's currently owned by the city. Um, so at a council meeting in May, um, the city uh, council basically declared that those parcels are exempt surplus property. There's two parcels. Uh, and government code requires that the gen there be general plan consistency, a, a general plan consistency determination by the planning agency prior to the sale of the public land. Um, and the planning commission serves as the city's planning agency. So that's why it's before you tonight. So both parcels uh, are being sold um, within the downtown plan area where hotels are principally per permitted use. And so, um, as we've discussed, um, the project uh, is consistent with um, the general plan policies and the sale of the land is consistent with the general plan and downtown plan. Um, CEQA uh, provides several categorical exemptions um, which are applicable to categories of projects and activities that the lead agency has determined generally do not pose a risk of significant impacts on the environment. Um, a CEQA categorical exemption review was prepared um, by the city's environmental consultant, um, which determined that the project is exempt from CEQA under categorical exemption uh, section 15.332 for infill development. So um, that being said, um, the project meets all the required site area standards and the findings for approval as detailed in the staff report and various attachments. Um, the project implements goals and policies of the general plan and downtown plan to support a new visitor serving hotel. It enhances the vitality of the downtown, revitalizes and connects people to the San Lorenzo River, and promotes alternative transportation and walkability. So staff is recommending approval based on the findings and conditions of approval in the draft resolution. And I'm available for any questions, as are the uh, applicants. Thank you for that large report. So well presented. At this time, I'd like to ask if there are any uh, questions from commissioners of staff. Commissioner Dan. Um, do we get presentations by the applicant yes. usually? Okay, well, yeah. I'll wait for that. Okay. Yeah, um, that's why I'm making them up. Okay, good. Um, 
what we usually do is we'll take questions from the Commission of Staff and then we'll get a presentation from um, the applicant. Just so I, uh, since I'm new mm -hmm. and um, I want to follow proper tradition, um, can staff questions be after the applicant as absolutely. well? Absolutely, yes. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Um, any other commissioners want to question staff right now? Well, let me ask one now. Okay, Commissioner Kennedy. So I'm looking at those voluntary community benefits that are proposed, and I understand that those are conditional upon an appeal to the Coastal Commission. And so my, I love these things that are offered, uh, particularly the Santa Cruz Hostel Society donation, but all of them really, like because the hostel is so directly providing access to the beach for anyone who can't pay 400 bucks for a hotel room. So my question for you is, how are these amounts come to? I mean, it looks like a great list. I'm a little tempted to up the ante, but uh, was that just in negotiation with the project team? or The applicants might be able to answer that better than I can, but I, as I had mentioned, this is something that has been low-cost visitor accommodations and those type of requirements that Coastal Commission staff have indicated should be part of projects as far as the local, local coastal program. Um, they're a little gray. <laughs> it's, like, it's hard for them to come up with you know, exactly what those should be. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've been working with them, the applicants, city staff, uh, to kind of come up with some ideas to satisfy those requirements. And these were some of them that were included. And as I mentioned, I, they're still kind of ongoing discussions about this. So okay. this is, it's not limited to this. Mm -hmm. there, there will be more, and we're hoping to have some of those more flushed out before it gets to council. Okay. So if some felt more important than others to us, we could give feedback on that. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for addressing that directly. It's, it's, it's just interesting, and I like how they do that, you know, because the appeal would take so long. It's instead the money could go to good causes, in my opinion. So Yeah, That's the idea is they really would like the money to stay local. Yeah, sure. Any other questions from the commission? Uh, with that, we'll invite a presentation from the applicant. Good evening. I'll, I'll be brief because staff has done such a comprehensive job on the presentation. My name is Owen Lawler. I'm a uh, manager of the uh, applicant at SCSF Ventures LLC, one of the managers. So I just have a few brief comments, and I'm here, of course, to answer questions, and we can delve into the details as you wish. As I thought about this project and I reviewed the staff report again today, I was just struck by how many, how much, how many general plan policies this project um, addresses, and I'm. Since we've talked so much about the project, I want to give a little context in, as I've been doing work along the river. So it's interesting. In 1977, the city adopted general, the first general plan that talked about connect, reconnecting the downtown with the river. Those who don't know, in 1955, there was a flood. We had a significant, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers very quickly constructed levees. By the early 60s, the levees were constructed, but what happened was we disconnected the downtown from the river, which had been grown up since the 1800s or along the river. So to this day, we still are not connected to the river. These projects that we're working on are the beginning of reconnecting the downtown to the river. And that's something that's, that for at least half a century, the community has spoken about in its general plan. So it's an exciting time to actually bring that to fruition here. Um, so in addition to that, you know, the project does something else that I think the community is really excited about, which is get people out of their cars and create a dense, walkable downtown where people can live a lot of their lives without getting in a car as much as they do. Being on the bike path, being connected to the bike, uh, the, the extensive bike, um, network that we're building out is, is really a huge advantage. And we want to encourage, that's part of this project, is 
bring people to town who love to bike, connect to the biking community, being literally on the bike path is an exciting opportunity. So, um, and as I don't, uh, um, Lee, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Ryan didn't mention, but we've got several letters from the downtown community, of, and we've got other folks from the downtown community who can talk about how important it's going to be to have a new hotel downtown to really stimulate and help bolster our downtown ex um, merchants and how important that is. So we're excited to be part of that. And to the point about our contributions, we're excited about those contributions to the community. We see the hotel as being not separate, but again, more connected to the community. An opportunity for people to come to town to learn more about the community, to contribute, to bring uh, activities in the community like the Boys and Girls Club and have, do fundraising. And the more we connect the hotel to the community, it's a win-win. I think people who come, it, it, it's a, it make, makes a more rich experience and it's obviously good for the community. And we see this not only creating that role, but also um, creating a, like a hub and a meeting place for people in the community. And we see this in Abbott Square We've created this great space in the downtown, and people really flock to it. And we can do that on the river, and this hotel can foster that and create another great meeting space for downtown. I think that the community will be excited about. And I've been many people have told me that, told me that. So, so we're excited about that. Um, so, and then finally, of course. The hotel is going to contribute significantly to the finances of the city and cities. And I, we haven't mentioned that tonight, but I thought I'd at least mention it. It's a significant contribution in TOT, close to $2 million a year going up from there. So I just, I just wanted to add that. And um, myself and Frank Petrelli, our, our attorney, is here to answer any questions you have as you, as you continue your deliberations. And thank you for your service. Thank you. And with that, um, well, I'll, uh, questions from the commission for either staff or the applicant? Okay. Uh, Let me get things over. Commissioner McKelvey. Uh, thanks for the presentation, both the staff and the applicant. A um, couple of things very much along the lines of what Commissioner Kennedy mentioned. Um, I read the, the correspondence, uh, the letter from the applicant regarding the public benefits that can and can't be asked for, the, the proposal as it's shaped right now. Um, there are just a few things. I, I'm wondering how much latitude there is to ask, and this is a question for staff as well as the applicant, but you know, things like three days a year for community groups to utilize the facilities is, I mean, could that be once a month? Could it be, you know, what are the, what are the, what's the shape of that? You know, negotiation. Um, in I'd like to know because it's not specifically stated um, beyond those kinds of access uh, arrangements. Are all the public? Are all the restaurants, amenities, etc. Are they all publicly accessible? I mean, I, I wouldn't think that a you know an on-site gym or anything might be, but but I'd really like to know the contours of that. And then. Because so many of the amenities involve the changes to the levy that are subject to an application that I guess is not complete based on the correspondence and the and the proposal that I read is, do we have absolute approval to make these changes with the Army Corps uh, at the levy? And if there's any hiccup in that, what happens to the amenities that are the, the public benefit that's being offered? Um, if I'm wrong on the status of that, but I'd love to be corrected. But um, that's really the, the I'm, I'm very interested in kind of the public benefit. And uh, I am actually, I, I, I love the concept of this project. I would love to see more rooftop amenities, but that's, you know, that's a calculation that other people have been involved in, so. Good, thank you for those questions. Mm -hmm. Um, staff and applicant, you want to jump in on? <laughs> I thought I'd give you the easy one first. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a few in there. Yep. Uh, 
Go for it. Good evening, Chair Conway and Commissioners. I'm Lee Butler, Director of Planning and Community Development. Um, so um, the number of uh, times per year um, that those uh, community or the amenity spaces are uh, available, I would direct that question to the applicant. And um, I would just um, also highlight that, um, as Ryan mentioned, you know, we are in coordination with the Coastal Commission with respect to additional visitor serving, low cost visitor serving accommodation uh, conditions, as we noted in our staff report. But go ahead. And I understand that the low cost, the low cost actual accommodation within the within the hotel are not part of the discussion. That's that's still the case, correct? That is still the case at this point, um, to our knowledge. I know the uh, the applicant has been exploring various um, uh, ways in which to address the low cost visitor serving accommodations, and so. Um, they can provide an update on the latest with respect to that. But as I mentioned, we, we do expect to have some type of additional condition um, that is um, placed on the project uh, at the city council level. Um, that's just still being worked out at this point in terms of um, what the specifics are related to that. Um, the uh, second is, uh, are the restaurants and bars publicly accessible? That is my understanding um, that they are. Um, I would ask the applicant to speak to whether or not uh, that is factual. Um, it's, you know, they would confirm that's the case, but I believe that's the case. I don't know about the pool area and whether that would be accessible or not. They can speak to that. Um, the Army Corps question is, is in our lane um, rather than the applicants. And um, yes, uh, there is an outstanding Army Corps um, application. That is something that um, has been obtained for the um, Front Riverfront project where we're constructing 175 units um, just north of this uh, site. And um, that, that process does take a little while to get through the Army Corps. They, uh, the applicants typically run that, uh, that Army Corps application process concurrently with the building permit so that um, they can get both of those, uh, the, the building permit and the Army Corps permit completed at uh, approximately the same time. And um, so th that's what I would anticipate as part of this as well, is that they overlap the um, Army Corps permitting with the building permitting, and um, hopefully those will, will dovetail at right about the same time. Thank you. You're welcome. And, I don't know if you wanted to, Chair, yeah. invite the applicant for I'll, I wondered if, if the applicant would like to address the further questions from Commissioner McKelvey. Happy to. Um, we're, we're certainly open to making the facilities available more often. Obviously, the off-season is going to be easier than, you know, 4th of July. Um, but we're certainly open to to... to we, again, we see this as a win-win. We, we think connecting the hotel, the community, and vice versa is a good thing. So we're, we're certainly open to it. And was there some other? You know, I have a follow-up question okay. to that. Um, how do you anticipate that um, operating on the ground? So if I'm a local nonprofit and I want to have my annual meeting, say, um, how would that how would that go about? Have you thought that far ahead? I know it's kind of in the weeds, but I would just say we'd probably have some, you know, some kind of a process that you'd contact the general manager. Or you have certain not time lead time, as long as it doesn't conflict with other events at the hotel. We, you know, we could work it out. I'm not doesn't I don't look think complicated. It's going to be overly cumbersome. Okay, good. Thank you. Was that good for your questions? Commissioner Polhemus. Thank you, Chair Conway. Um, this is for the applicant. Um, can we go back to the, um, I guess I would call it the community benefits slide. There was a list of, okay. Um, uh, my question is, are you open to shifting around one of these priorities? Um, there it is, the tower viewers. Um, my understanding is that Tower viewers can run two to three thousand dollars each, and is is that roughly correct? I don't. I've never bought one, so I don't know. 
<laughs> okay. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, that's all well and good. Um, don't know. You know, I, I kind of feel like if you want to go and see the offerings of the levy, you can just go down there and it might be of better community benefit to shift. I mean, I'm not sure how many you were thinking of providing, but maybe shifting those into like maybe a contribution to a local, one of the local um, groups that you have listed here, maybe that might be possibly a better use of funds. I, we're, this was an idea that I think came from another project. We're certainly open to that. We're, I should add, we're also, we see the connection of the rivers, again, a win-win. People, the benefit of the river and the habitat and connecting people to that. We've had discussion with the Coastal Watershed Council about leading tours and connecting people with the river environment as well. Um, so, you know, this is a work in progress. We're certainly open to other ideas about how to approach this. And were you, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Um, and I assume those would be, they were thought of at least, um, for the, the pool area. Was that sort of the idea yeah, or, or, well, potentially or along the levee itself. Oh, okay. Know, for folks to look at, uh, wildlife in the levee without having to disturb them. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Dan. Thank you. Um, yeah, I have a couple questions, but but on that point, another option is providing binoculars in every hotel room. There's been places I've stayed that have done that. That's a good idea. By the ocean. That's cool. Um, that. But that's that wasn't what I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I actually had some questions um, about the landscape plan. Um, I think that was in project plans number three. Yeah. Um, I just had some, I couldn't find where it was listed what the replacement trees would be. The replacement street trees yeah. or the replacement trees on the levee? Any of them. I mean, the levee actually I did see, but the re I did not see what species the replacement street trees would be. Well, and, that's dictated by the city's um, but, plan. I believe if I'm, it's either Sycamores or London Plain. I'm so, guessing. but are they? Are they? You know, I didn't. I didn't see where they were in the packet. So, and since this was my first development project with the city planning commission, you know, at the county there was always a comprehensive landscape plan, and they had a list of species with numbers. I think where the plans were, and I, I just couldn't find I where that was. I think that's in the set. I think we. I'm pretty sure there's a landscape palette in the set with the tree. The tree, the species. Well, I could CMG try to with Lansing Ortega. I mean, they we spent a lot of time on it, so I'm yeah. sure. No give me doubt. a few minutes. I can probably find okay, that for that you. I'm sorry, be, yeah, that would be great. Uh, sorry, um, I don't know it off the top of my head, but I can find it for you. Yeah, and I great. So, and I think just to clarify for Commissioner Dan, I um, on the significant projects. Sometimes what's part of this packet is um, sort of a representative piece of the plans, and there is a website that has the full set. Um, isn't, isn't that right, Lee? It would be helpful. Well, maybe after this meeting, I could you could yeah. show me where that is, because landscape plans are important to me. Right. Um, so then also I had a question, though, about the renderings, because the renderings do show street trees and other trees. And so it's confusing to me if the renderings are trying to tell me what the replacement trees are, or if they're just Fantasy trees. There are no fantasy trees. Every tree in here is selected and specified. So the renderings are an accurate picture of the species of replacement trees. Right. I mean, honestly, there may not be at the same size that are shown well, on the plan. That's part two but, of my question. But I, yeah, but, but, but yeah, but um, the landscape palette from CMG is careful. It, it, there's no... Um, so the renderings are accurate as to what the replacement species are going to be. Okay, and, well and that... Yes. Um, so then on the renderings, I guess my um, question would be, they show mature trees, and I guess I, I just, you know, don't find that very helpful. And when I'm trying to get an accurate picture of what the project is going to look like from year zero to 10, um, it would be more helpful 
to me, I don't know what the rest of my commissioners think, to have a, an, a rendering that has a more accurate picture of what it will look like as built. Um, because I, I do, um, their renderings are beautiful. And by the way, the design is lovely. Um, it's, it's a, I think the design is beautiful. Um, but landscape is important. And I think it's really helpful for me and the public to be able to see you know what an accurate picture of what the landscaping will be. Um, so and so, if there's going to be palms and I, you know, I can't really decipher some of the other trees, um, it would just be good to know what that is. Well, yeah, agreed. I think we're going to use some fairly larger larger specimens than might ordinarily. We want the hotel when it opens to be an attractive place. Mm -hmm. And a lot landscaping is a key part of that. The roof along the levee, all that. But I don't have off the top of my hand exactly what size we're planning to install in each location well, the, and all that. The but staff report actually was undecided about that. They said, we're either going to go with this or we're either going to go with this. And so I guess in general, this might not be you know, in your bucket. It might just be what the city is requiring of you, and they didn't require you to specify. So I guess that's part of what my questions are. I would have to look at the plans to refresh my memory, but there's pretty extensive landscaping detail in the full set if you pull it up. There are. So, and then, yes, yeah, so not to beat a dead horse on this, but I guess for the understory, very specific um, of what type of sage and grasses are going to be used. But that's, I just couldn't find that for the trees. That's, that's why I asked. So there's a um, narrative on sheet L1-1 that states, um, where, where, where find my place, L1-1 in the plans. Project plans three. three. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, sorry, yeah, thanks. It, we, we split them into three, um, <clears throat> just based on the size of the documents. Uh, it's 11 of 26, uh, and it looks like um, Ryan's going to go. pull that up here. Yeah, it says, um, Pages there it's uh, 11, 11 of 26 L1-1. Yeah. The narrative states, streetscape improvements are implemented on Front Street to reinforce cohesiveness of the district in accordance with the downtown plan. Existing London Plain Street trees along Front Street are to be retained where possible and further reinforced by planting eight new trees along the length of the hotel site. Um, and it goes on from there. Um, I'll note that... Um, just this past fall in September, the um, Planning Commission um, actually updated the street tree palette uh, or made a recommendation, I should say, to the council to update the uh, street tree palette for our downtown area. And um, that was um, subsequently approved by the council, submitted to the Coastal Commission, um, and that is now in effect. So, so we have a very uh, new plant palette um, that, uh, it, that includes the street trees for our uh, downtown area. So this would have to comply with that new, uh, those new requirements. So the applicant gets a buffet of choices for street trees, and they choose out of what the city's palette is? Typically, our parks department uh, puts, puts that requirement on them at the building permit stage. And in regards to <clears throat> tree replacement, um, there are 16 trees that are recommended for approval, 11 of which are heritage. So um, in terms of our requirements in the coastal zone um, that requires, in terms of replacement ratio, it's, as you mentioned, they can kind of have a choice, but it's two 24-inch box trees or six 15-gallon trees for each tree to be removed. And that's set as a condition of approval. So they will be required to do that. And um, I believe the landscape plan does meet that requirement. But, uh, so in order to see the palette of tree species, I should reference this other, this other document then. So I can, I can do that later. I got it. Yeah. Got it. Um, let's see. Um, the other question I had is more of just the um, parking requirements. What's the logic behind only requiring 0.25 spaces per room? I believe I wasn't involved in that discussion, but 
I think the idea is that if you're in the downtown area, you're not just going to the hotel. You're also, there's, you're, there's overlap in terms of going to restaurants, going to an office, going shopping, going to a Warriors game, what have you. So you're going to be going to the hotel or and basically you don't need to have I think that's the idea is, is the overlap of parking and, and basically parking to go to various locations in the downtown. And I, I understand it's a policy that the council set, um, but yeah, it just it just didn't quite make sense to me if you why you would have fewer that many fewer rooms than parking spaces than rooms when folks are going to drive probably to Santa Cruz to stay here, and it just made me wonder where people were going to park. Hang on one, one second. Commissioner McKelvey, did you want to add something to this? Isn't the, doesn't this fall under 2097? This is a hotel. It's not a yeah, housing project. It's like, but it's, it's like commercial. the one use that's not. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's right. It's the, uh, it's, it's the only, it's the yeah. only place so, we can have parking. Yeah, there, there are two exclusions, <laughs> hotels being one and AB 2097, so we are allowed. And, and so we are allowed to require parking for hotels. And... Um, I, I think just to add on to Ryan's comments, um, you know, this this hotel originally had substantially fewer parking oh, spaces, yeah. and in our downtown, we actually allow for, and it, it's less of an issue now. But um, previously, pre AB two hundred nine seven, when we could require parking for most uses, we did require parking for most uses, and they often relied on the public parking supply, and part of that was. Um, a result of um, that being a more efficient use of parking spaces. So, you know, an individual who comes to stay in the hotel overnight can use one of those public parking spaces when they go off to do whatever they're doing during the day, visiting our, our beautiful city. They That same parking space can then be used for someone going to breakfast, and then they leave, and so on and so forth. Um, and okay. so that same parking space is, is used quite a few times. Um, I will note that our um, city transportation engineer is here with us, and um, if uh, if the commission has questions, then I'm sure we can um, lean on his expertise as well. But I think that's that was really the the thought behind it is that that shared parking resource is a more efficient use, and um, also. Um, it reflects the fact that we want to encourage hotels in our downtown. It's an important use. Uh, we heard from um, some of the uh, commenters the, who provided public comment about how the visitors to downtown hotels will really help to support our local businesses. And so a parking ratio that's too high um, would be discouraging that use. In what way? I don't under, I don't, now I don't follow you because I feel like Yes, we want a hotel. We want people down there to use our downtown. But I, 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 I get where you're going. I'm very familiar with modern transportation demand practices. Um, and, and I get all that. I just, um, and I don't need to belabor the point. I'm just saying I, um, I would not have supported a lower parking. I mean, we're at the limit we can ask them for, and I think that's good. It's still fewer than the number of rooms. That concerns me. If the hotel's full and there's a warrior game going on, I mean, it's going to be Parkageddon down there. Um, so, <laughs> um, anyway, um, I mean, I live down here, so I walk everywhere, but um, I also am familiar with um, when it's crowded and busy and people are circling and circling and circling for parking down here. So um, I support the parking as is. I just wanted uh, to familiarize myself with the logic behind low requirements. So that's all for now. OK, great. Thank you. Commissioner Thompson, oh, no question at the moment. Commissioner Kennedy? I've got a couple. OK. Well, I've got seven, so they're kind of detailed. Um, First is I see the project is going to be all electric. It's your intent to stick with that and not switch to gas, which you technically could do. Not for long, but for a little bit longer. <laughs> Interesting question. So cool heating is an issue. Um, we a can come. What? A big issue from what I understand. Um, especially, you know, and we have a spa in the interior. Um, I would defer to my 
mechanical engineers will comply. I can't answer the standing here. If we That's have right. the option for gas, if we would install a gas meter and use gas to, for water heat, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking primarily the pools would be the main issue. Um, we certainly would use heat pumps and all that for the space heating and split units probably in the unit rooms. That's, well, a, that's enough of an answer. Yeah. Um, okay. The plans in front of us indicate that they will comply with the natural gas ban. So and I'm going to take that as the we, If we have to, we will. And the building next door is 100%. Yeah, I understand. Electric, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, again, some of these are kind of detailed, but I've been thinking oh. about these buildings for a long time, so bear with me. I saw uh, one of the conditions was like loaning out bikes, and I just wondered if you'd thought about B-Cycle or integrating with that. Maybe that's just to come, and I'm sure Matt uh, could help with that, but it seemed like there might be an opportunity there. I th so absolutely. Providing bikes and a B-Cycle station, even better. I think that would work for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I'm kind of zipping around here. I, I see those beautiful concrete panels that are being used. On the and exterior? I, yeah, I really like this design. Generally, I have a concern. We used to call it articulation, which is a dumb word, but like insets and having a little shadow. So, for example, that one of the renderings shows these concrete panels, you know, with the very deep wells and very deep shadow lines. And then the renderings I see is more flush, which is okay, but um, it's kind of an architectural question. Let me think for a second. Um, in your opinion, is the current design providing enough relief to give us a, you know, a, a facade with some depth? Well, I think it's. I'm going to speak like an architect. Unfortunately, understanding that you're not, couldn't make mm -hmm. it. But we spent a lot of time thinking about the materiality. I think, in my view, it's not simply articulating spaces, but better quality material. Yeah. What we're proposing is a this this um, uh, uh, ceramic panel essentially is I think will create a really it doesn't come through as well. I've seen pictures of this in other buildings around the world and it's very mm -hmm. beautiful material. I think it's that will create the kind of interest in the in the in the elevations with different light reflecting on it during the day as. Ryan pointed out, we've designed to the ordinance in terms of articulation. Yeah. We, as a non-residential building, we have to comply with the zoning ordinance, and we've worked very hard to make sure that we do. So That's a great answer. We're not getting okay. sand float stuck over right. here, so that's a big deal. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so kind of following on that, and this kind of goes to staff, um, condition number 23 talks about, um, and maybe you could pull it up if you get a minute, talks about staff uh, finalizing the colors. And I get how that process works. I wonder if we could add the words like materials and connections to that condition, because to me it's more than colors. I think you're doing this already, and we've talked a lot, Tim Marie's not here, but about how the materials come together is as important as anything else. Hard to ask, but if we could clarify, that would be nailed down, like moving forward. It would make me happy. Did you want to be suggesting that we yeah, add so some language to right that? Yeah, so 23 there reads, mm -hmm. final colors shall be approved by the zoning administrator prior to approval of building permits. And my suggestion would be to add two words so that it reads, final colors, materials, and connections. But if anyone's got a better word, please give me one. You said materials and what? In connections, connections? Or, you know, like where the where the stucco ends, transitions. There we go. Oh. I like transitions. Thank you, John. I know you do this already, but I think this might give you a little extra clarity of that. Yeah, there's not not a problem adding that at all. I'll also note that um, condition seven uh, requires that the working drawings have the same level of articulation yeah, yeah. of the um, conceptual plans that are before you. Have. So we also have that other condition as well. That's right. That's right. Okay, thanks. That was easy. Um, all right, we're talking about trees. So those big old palm trees on the pool deck, which I think will make a beautiful space, those would probably really violate the height limits when fully grown. They look really tall to me. 
Sorry, I like I hate to go there, but are trees <laughs> excluded from the ordinance? Be rude. I don't think that's ever came up in that discussion, did it? It all talks about structures. So. Yeah, I never thought of it when we were writing yeah. the ordinance. <laughs> At all. Okay, um, so. don't care. Might want to yeah. figure that out. Because they're going to be big trees, hopefully, if they thrive up there. Okay, that's what I hear from you know everyone I run into. Oh, it's so tall! It's so tall! So here we are. You know, I think it's a good idea to exceed the height a bit, but then we're going to go even taller. Makes me a bit nervous. Okay, uh, fairly controversial. Is there a public access restroom associated with this project? And I know, I know, but well, I'd say this. Like most hotels, there'll be a, there'll be a restroom in the lobby. Um, is it? Um, we this is an issue. I understand the issue. Um, I don't think we've worked out exactly. We're going to have. There's also a space on the. There's two um, probably cafes of some type. One on the corner of the posed for the corner of Laurel in front, and one facing the Maple Alley mm -hmm. probably will have bathrooms working out. But not really that. like that porta potty that was yeah. out there for many years. OK, <laughs> uh, that's a good answer. I'm not intending the hotel to like manage a public facility for us. Mm -hmm. But man, when you have to pee, you have to pee. And you're well, either going to pee in that bathroom or on the wall. Right. And I'm not saying them, me, you know, so just a thought. I wonder if it could be incorporated in the, the public park. but. It's a big ask. Yep. Okay. Commissioner McKelvey. Uh, there is a bullet point in the letter from Mr. Chan. Yeah. It says provide publicly accessible restrooms that are accessible from the river walk. Okay. Well, you hear me. I know so, it's a big ask. Yeah. Then in the restaurant, the yeah. We have to work out operationally how that works. Sure. But we Understood. Mm -hmm. I think it's in everyone's benefit that mm -hmm. as much as possible. Everyone's needs are accommodated here. Uh, thank you. That's kind of a sensitive one for me at least. Um, OK, uh, number 27O is about this buzzer when cars enter and exit. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a thing we do to like slap this buzzing thing on, just like make us feel better. They're typically kind of annoying. I would like to ask if we could eliminate that condition. And here's my reasoning, and maybe Matt would be better to talk to this. This is a big wide port cochere. And you can see like one of the plans, I wrote down which one it is. You can see how the cars are coming in and out of there. But this is not like other projects where it's a real narrow mm -hmm. thing. So I know it's not a huge amount of money, but I wanted to ask if uh, Public Works is like set on that or if we could ditch it. Our transportation engineer, Matt Starkey, is here. We'll ask if he would like to speak to that um, potential um, removal. Correct me if I'm wrong. If it's going to be super effective and safe, then I would change yeah, my mind. Good evening, everyone. Matt Starkey, transportation manager here, City of Santa Cruz. Um, yeah, we do typically add these uh, buzzers where we have more of a, a blind driveway coming out of a parking facility. I think this may have been more one of our standard sort of conditions we put on. Um, yeah. I do know in the traffic study we referenced there's good visibility coming out of yeah. the driveway here. Um, yeah, that's it, Ryan, like where this this turning. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> I say this is something maybe we consider looking at in the building permit review phase. Maybe we add some flexibility on that condition for us. Um, yeah, just looking at the wall way out here, there's that stairwell area on the right there that it know. just didn't seem necessary but you've heard yeah. me and, and i'll leave you to fine tune that okay thank you just add one thing on that Pete, because yeah. i i flagged that too and i thought of the people who are going to be living next across the street oh yeah totally um, man, man, man. so it's like address it now or address it later <laughs> it, it feels to, that's the kind of thing we like slap on to make ourselves feel better about it um okay is that all my questions that is um, thanks. I have some big things to talk about later, but thank you, Matt. Great. Good questions. Matt, you could stay. 
I have just a couple of questions, and I'll start out with the one that um, may involve you. Um, so the Paseo, the Maple Street Paseo, was a really big deal, um, a big selling point for um, as the whole standards were being developed. And I have a qu couple of questions about that. Um, and one of them is, so first, first of all, the idea was that it's going to be a pedestrian and a bicy bicycle access from the levee downtown without having to be on one of the streets and without taking your life in your hands. Um, I thought it was a little steep the way it is now. I use it all the time. But um, So first of all, um, one question is about the um, safety of the, there's a crosswalk. Is that, is that flashing? Is there anything to press? Um, I, I did not see in there what kind of analysis has been in terms of that. Yeah, the, so I think the crosswalk you're referring to is the one shown on the bottom of the screen here. Um, what we don't see in this nice rendering is the, um, the project on the south side of the street where we're working with the Metro Center Redevelopment to actually build the, the traffic signal intersection here. So yes, I do care a lot about that signal. It's gonna be a typical traffic signal okay. and the details of how we do the detection and crossing and connections mm -hmm. across there are being worked out now actually. Mostly it'll, it'll just be a reasonable um, bicycle access um, so then that um, raises a question and it came in through some of the public comment and I wondered when I looked at it as well. Um, the, as it's shown, it's very steep mm -hmm. and um, which to me makes sense because, you know, if I was commuting home and I'm in a hurry, I think I should be slowed down as I'm going down that hill, you know, and probably dragging a foot on the way down. <laughs> um, there was a recommendation from a member of the public that it be basically, we cut out a turn and it made be made more gradual. And I wondered if you could speak to that. I was concerned when I saw that proposal um, that it would just be way too fast um, going down there and also maybe it wouldn't meet the grade requirements. Yeah, I think when we combine bicycle and pedestrian facilities, we have this constraint with ADA on how we do the slopes through the area. Um, we looked at this issue earlier today. I think it's one that's worth investigating further. If we do want it to be a high quality bike connection, we do need to consider curving these connections so that cyclists can come down the path. Um, similar to how you access the San Lorenzo River Bridge right now, there's a curve there that helps you get up slowly, uh, mm -hmm. but you can still do it on your bike. So I do think that's a good improvement here. Um, other ideas we could consider would also be on the stairwell, um, including like a, a little lip or sort of like gutter that you can actually bring your bike tires up with you as you go up the stair. That could be a nice feature as well if we can't get the, the grading to work through here that's both, you know, accessible and tolerable for bikes. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I think my next question about bicycles is probably for the applicant. Um, I love that um, this is, this project is intended to really attract bicyclists. And we have a lot of bicycle um, activities here. I know I've certainly had friends coming in for the triathlon and so forth who can't find a place. And you know, so that's, that's a real benefit. I looked at the bike parking. How safe is that bike parking? Are you, is it, um, is it like, you know, I'd lock my bike to a structure there? Is it gated? Is it, uh, do you anticipate people, you know, hotel guests coming and keeping their nice bikes there? Are they going to be in their room? Probably. I mean. Probably. I mean, if they're very nice, I'm sure they'll want, but we're, I think our goal is to make it secure enough so people feel comfortable with it. I, I recall the design. It, to be honest, it's been Looking, it's been two years probably since okay. we started with this. So I, I haven't. Here we go. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. But we have a bike area. Yeah. No, that's going to be that. Yeah. I remember now. That's secure for sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you'll you'll need a key. You'll need a mm -hmm. hotel key. You know, um, get in there or some mm -hmm. some other. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. um, that. That's that's good. Um. And then my last question um, is for staff. 
um, what local hiring policies, um, I know the city has fairly robust local hiring policies um, when it's involved in a project, which it certainly would be on a number of levels because there's the land. Um, what, would it, what would apply for this project? I think it's an important point. I do not know that there are specific um, requirements that are being built into that um, sales agreement, but um, that is something that you could ask uh, of the applicant. Is they are um, negotiating with that uh, with that sales purchase. I understand that it is um, it's tricky to to bring up, and it also um, you know is should be done very thoughtfully. Um, but I have seen it happen um, in um, a lot of contexts. I'm not sure that I feel knowledgeable enough of how to bring it up in this context yeah. um, beyond uh, raising the question. Sure. So we, we have looked at the issue um, in the recent past, um, approximately three years ago. Um, we did an evaluation and presentation to the council related to that and um, found um, that there are both cost increases mm -hmm. and uh, labor constraints mm -hmm. in our local area that uh, pose challenges mm -hmm. to um, the larger project in particular. Mm -hmm. um, I understand that. And so um, that, um, at that time, there were no additional okay. um, recommendations that were carried forward. Um, there may be some additional study of that in the near future to see if those same constraints are still in place. And um, what uh, we, we certainly recognize the, the benefits um, of um, both environmental and um, in terms of um, keeping that uh, that money local um, and we also recognize that um, you know, the the workforce isn't always um, large enough to um, support some of the big projects Partly because of our housing costs right I know it's a tail chaser um, yeah which I wouldn't look to add a condition or anything like that but I do raise it as a question and um, I wish that we could find a way um, uh, that we could have some policies that strike that balance, um, you know, goals or whatever. Um, it's a larger discussion, but um, one that, you know, certainly can be explored um, in a manner that um, allows for uh, the, the projects to proceed, but also recognizes that importance. And so, it's something that we have given some additional thought to even since the, the last study in, in 2000 or so. Maybe some and priority hiring, or I'm not sure what the... What yeah, there, there are models um, similar to what you're speaking to that, that could be explored. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to bring it up. Um, that's all of my questions. Uh, yes, Commissioner Kennedy. I've got one more just for the applicant uh, before we move on to public comment. I know uh, we talked a lot about this in the downtown plan days, which seems like just yesterday and a long time ago. Um, one of my big concerns for this project, and I see all these great conditions, we'll talk about those later, is like kind of lighting. And I know that's very sensitive throughout this plan. So how, what's your feeling on the lighting design here? Is it gonna give us the results we want? Is it gonna be dark on the levee? Like kind of what's your intent? Um, for lighting. I, you know, it's all coming together, but I see tree up lights in some spots, and sometimes the anti bird, you know, the bird stuff says one thing. And I just want to hear from you like, it's going to be light on the roof deck, but it's not going to spill into the levee. And, you know, how's all that work in your mind? Well, I think it's going to require careful study as we get into the, into the construction drawings. I, I think it's, it can be a really beautiful aspect of the night of this, you know, for people to enjoy it. We've got the impacts to wildlife. We've got neighbors. We've, it's, it's a, and, and night sky issues. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's uh, something that requires some special thought 
you know, to make sure we get it right. And um, so like, I struggled on the last project, which was a whole different deal about this, and requested like a photometric study, which in my green building experience kind of helps mm -hmm. to find out what you're going to get. Would you be amenable to that? I mean, the other applicant thought it was like a ten thousand dollar thing, and I was like, oh I, my gosh, that sounds like a lot. But what are your thoughts on a well, like the best said, way to achieve the want, lighting we all want? Our goal is to really do everything right. Okay. okay. I mean, we want to, and lighting is a real, you know, I'm, I'm no expert, but it seems reasonable given the scope of this project to get the best minds around the table to design the lighting that deals with all these, you know, different aspects of it. So I think that makes sense. Okay. Thanks. I'd just point out um, that to comply with this condition that Ryan has highlighted here, oh, yeah. um, I would anticipate that they're going to need to provide a photometric study at the, the building permit stage to ensure that level of detail is That's being adhered point, to. You're calling out the foot candles and everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. Um, okay. If I could digress for just a moment, sure. um, I just wanted to also point out that um, for public projects, when those are coming through, we do have um, in our scoring system um, benefits that are provided to um, local um, uh, local companies. Um, and that, that may be what something. you're that yeah. may be what you're thinking about. Yeah. Um, so we do have that on the, the public side, mm -hmm. um, but we do not currently have that on the private side. Right. So which would be that's hard to do. Right. Um, when you were mentioning that, I, I was thinking that's probably what you're thinking about now that right. I was <laughs> connecting the dots a bit. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Okay, um, thank you. And with that, um, I will open the public hearing. Anybody who would like to address the commission can do so at this time for up to three minutes. Would you please line up if you intend to speak to the commission? Please sign in while the person before you is speaking um, and uh, introduce yourself and welcome. Yes, we are. Could you please sign in uh, over here? Yes, you did already. Great. Wonderful. Um, good evening, and thank you for, for your time. Uh, my name is Toto. I'm with Unite Here Local 19, the hospitality workers union that representing workers central coast of California. Um, every aspect of the hotel project seems to be meeting the bare minimum, nothing more. The developer is not commit to any real community benefits. In terms of lower cost accommodations, the hotel is providing next to none with raised serious question about the project consistency with the local coastal program and the coastal act. To address this issue, the developer had offered only a few crumbs. Three family suite, which only comprise less than one and a half percent of the total room small donations to nonprofit organization, free buy rental, Wi-Fi and public accessible restroom. To add insult to injury, the developer insists that even this paltry offer will be withdrawn if the project is appealed to the Coastal Commission and receive substantial issue finding. Nor could this project contribute enough to solving the housing crisis that many of our members face. The Coastal Commission shares our opinion that $5 is too low for an in-lieu fee. By changing this amount to a minimum, they have opening up the opportunity for the city to require more. Affordable housing needs to remain a priority, and the city should do everything in its power to raise that $5 fee, not only for this project, but for the future developments. The community in Santa Cruz deserve better than what this hotel is offering. Please recommend that the city council reject this project. Um, I also want to note that we have submitted a lengthy, more detailed letter to you, and we apologize for the last minute submission, because we was only having three days from the staff a report came out. So thank you for your time. 
And Commissioner Chair, I just want to note that uh, at least one of our speakers who speaks Spanish, so we will need to do the translation. We'll allow that for time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Good evening, honorable commissioners and chairperson Conway. I'm a little emotional, but I'm going to speak from the heart and from here. My name is Vicki Silva, and I work at the Higher Regency of Monterey. I was born and raised here in Santa Cruz. And my daughters and granddaughter live here as well. The hotel proposal, proposal concerns, concerns me due to the lack of lower cost rooms and low in lieu fee payment in the development. We will, it will make to affordable housing. The city needs to make sure that shore is able to be enjoyed by all by, by improving lower hotel. I'm emotional, I'm sorry. It's okay. By improving, um, uh, by approving a luxury hotel with almost no lower cost rooms, the message is clear that the access to the coastal is only for the wealthy. Hospitality workers like, my, like me cannot afford to stay in a place like this. I can barely afford where I work at with an employee discount. Actually, I've never stayed there or any of my family members or friends. Sorry, I went off the track. Uh, and this high-end hotel would be no exception. I would like for all, all hardworking people like me who live out of town in here to be able to access Santa Cruz and enjoy the city like I do. But that would not be possible without lower cost accommodations. Housing is extremely expensive in Santa Cruz, which reminds me, I have to think of which bill I'm gonna pay, what groceries I'm gonna buy, we have three water bills. We have clean water, chemicals that get put in the water, and dirty water. I'm always balancing. I'm living month to month and still commuting to Santa Cruz. Gas, everything. I don't even think I'll be able to stay in Santa Cruz. Like the gentleman just spoke first. We're all having to move to areas that have lower housing costs. Um, <sighs> in Santa Cruz, and the hotel is not giving as much as it should towards affordable housing. At the minimum fee required, this project would not fund any real housing development in Santa Cruz. I urge you to raise the in lieu fee for the pro this project. I encourage the same for future projects. To me, there is nowhere like the Monterey Bay area. I love living here and couldn't imagine living somewhere else. Please don't lose sight of the concerns of the community and to our voices, because we're here so you can hear us, of the community, and recommend that, And I recommend that the city council reject the project as proposed. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comment. Good evening, my name is um, Marta Hernandez. Thank you for your time. And I live in Santa Cruz and I have worked at Dreaming as a housekeeper for 28 years, as a resident of Santa Cruz for several decades. This hotel project really, really concerns me. The low affordable housing contribution and the lack of any meaningful lower cost accommodation will have a detrimental effect on my community. Housing is not affordable for families like me. There is not enough affordable housing in Santa Cruz and the determination for affordable housing is not accurate based on the cost of living in my, neighbor, my neighborhood. I directly see the effects of not having affordable housing. There is crime and drug addiction. People do not have a place. They can go to the bathroom. They can go to the bathroom, let alone take a shower and drug use and vandalism are done openly. This creates a health hazard for my community. That's my first concern. I can see several homeless. They need places to live because um, they, they don't have places where 
they have Gopi, and that's really, really big problem for, for the health, for everyone. Um, and having houses that is actually affordable will help alleviate these issues. Without lower cost room, this new high-end hotel will invite only rich people to come and enjoy our natural, natural resources and leave us behind. It will not be fair to, be, to the people who call Santa Cruz home. The city and developer need to think of the consequence for, on our city, such as homelessness and trash, rather than thinking solely on profits. Santa Cruz residents deserve a decent place to live. Please recommend that this city council that's not approved the project as proposed. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I'm going to ask the uh, members of the audience to please refrain from expressing either disagreement or support. It makes it really difficult for new speakers. Um, and we're going to really welcome all comment. Thank you. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es María Elena González. Trabajo en el Dream por 13 años. Como propone este hotel, no contribuye a la comunidad en términos de vivienda accesible. Todos los días manejo 45 minutos al trabajo porque no me alcanza para pagar vivienda cerca de mi trabajo. Pierdo dos horas en, el, en la carretera, muy cansado, agradado, el día ocupado de mi trabajo, pierdo tiempo para pasar con mi familia, gasto entre 80 y 90 dólares de gasolina en semana, vivo en pescadero con mis padres de mayor edad de 80 años, mi esposo, mis dos hijos, Y si nos movemos a vivir a Santa Cruz, pagaría yo más de 5 mil dólares al mes en vivienda. No gano lo suficiente para pagar esa cantidad, ni yo ni mi esposo. Tener vivienda accesible nos ayudaría mucho para no viajar tanto a mi trabajo, reducir los gastos de mi vivienda tiempo para viajar con mi familia y pasar con ellos y con mis padres. Los dueños del proyecto deben comprometerse a pagar más de cinco por pie cuadrado a, la, a esta comida, comunidad. Um, respetuosamente pido consideración a las familias trabajadoras a esta área para tener viviendas accesibles para nosotros. Gracias. Thank you very much. I will translate what she just said. <coughs> Good evening, commissioners. My name is Maria Elena González, and I, work, I have worked at the Dreaming for 13 years. As proposed, this hotel does not contribute enough to the community in terms of affordable housing. Every day, I drive at least 45 minutes one way to work because I cannot afford housing closer to my job. Spending nearly two hours in the car is exhausting on top of a busy day at work every day. And it takes away time from, time from the time I could otherwise spend at home with my family. I spend around 80 or $90 on a week on gas. I live on Pescadero with my parents, my husband and my two kids, one of whom is an adult. We have no choice but to live together. If, if I were to live in Santa Cruz, I will cost, it will cost me 5,000 at minimum. I don't make enough to pay that, not even with my husband's income. Up. Affordable housing in Santa Cruz will benefit working, working people like me because we could we could live a short, a short distance from our jobs, which will reduce the environmental monetary cost of commuting. 
the developer of this hotel needs to commit more than $5 per square foot to this community. I respectfully ask you to consider working families in this area. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, Planning Commissioners. I'm Ron Pomerantz. <clears throat> the city's planning development mantra and policy is housing, 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 and more housing at any and all costs. Now, a few well-connected developers <clears throat> dangle revisionist history and inflated promises to build a hotel using three city parcels, no less. The mantra is magically suspended, at least until some other sites down the road open up for 150-foot developments. Sure looks, feels, and smells like hypocrisy in motion. Approval of this oversized monolith to environmental stupidity in the floodplain with inadequate parking <clears throat> that goes below the river level and will require continual pumping. Little improvement for pedestrian and bike access and safety. Increased congestion inaccessibly priced for the majority of residents and visitors. And most importantly, a lost opportunity to comply with California State Regional Housing Needs Allocation, RENA. All point to denying this project. Big-hearted generosity. Oh, wow, $15,000 to the Hostel Society. $25,000 to the Boys and Girls Club. Wow, that is incredible. Sarcasm accepted. <clears throat> There's no labor protection, as you've heard. Another ground for the project denial is a sleight of hand trick. The hotel developers asked and got increased height from the general plans 50 feet to 70. But in the hotel's plans, they've added 15 more feet to that. When does the shuck in and jive and end? Sure, it would be honorable and fair for staff to also represent the residents and public's interest rather than being shills for developers. I hear excellent questions from some of the commissioners. <clears throat> and when SOP answers are given, unfortunately, they backpedal and concede to the staff and the developers. Why don't you hold your ground and assure public major benefits are required and upheld. It sure feels like the fix is in to give the developers what they want. This whole sh hotel should be rejected and our public land should be used to meet Santa Cruz's number one problem, pop, number one problem and the mantra we've just talked about earlier. More affordable housing, especially for our workforce. Thank you for your time and your thoughtful consideration. Thank you for your comments. Hello, Commissioners. I'm Jorian Wilkins. I'm the Executive Director for the Downtown Association of Santa Cruz, so I work with the 550 businesses in the district downtown. Um, I want to thank all of you for volunteering your time to help make our city better. I care a ton about landscaping, so I loved all of your questions. Um, I also wanted to just recognize and thank all of the workers who came to speak today and to let you know that the downtown businesses care a lot about affordable housing, and we do everything we can to advocate for better places for workers to live in Santa Cruz so that they don't have to do those commutes that can live here in our community. So we really appreciate um, your words today as well. Um, but I am here today to support the, uh, the hotel project. I have heard from personally from three dozen different business owners who are ma massive fans of this project. And in the public meetings that the project uh, developer has offered to have with the business owners, they've all been unanimously supportive of the folks who've showed up. Um, we know this is going to bring hundreds of people into our community on a nightly basis who plan to go out to eat, who are going to go shopping, and who are going to really add to um, a thriving downtown. And we need investment in our downtown to continue to have a thriving downtown. Retail is constantly under attack by Amazon, <laughs> and we aren't going to be able to fill every retail vacancy with another retailer, and we don't have things like this drawing people downtown, we won't have the beautiful downtown that we have today. 
So I'm here to urge the approval of this and also thank you for continuing to work on affordable housing. I'm excited about all the affordable housing that's being built downtown as well. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Bill Kempf. Um, I'm an architect in town and uh, have had an office downtown for 25 years. Um, and I'm also the uh, treasurer of the Downtown Association. Um, so I just think what um, I agree completely with what Jorian just put out about bringing more people downtown. And I, I think that having a hotel, it's crazy to me that this town doesn't have a hotel in the downtown core. And I, I think that bringing in people from the outside when they're on vacation, that they, they're kind of forced to use our downtown which will be great for the businesses that we deal with on a regular base, basis at the DTA. Um, the thing that's surprising to me the most as an architect is how little architecture conversation there's been <laughs> tonight. But um, I, I really am excited about what Owen has put forth. I think it's contextually um, appropriate. I think it fits in with everything that's, that is happening downtown. And I love the fact that he has energized the levy I think it's a great project, and I'm, I'm totally in favor of it, and I hope that you are as well. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Hi, everyone. Joy Schendeldecker. Um, thank you for the presentation and the questions and being here. Um, so I agree that affordable housing is our real need, not a another hotel, but I expect this project to um, move forward. And in that light, I'm just going to make some comments and proposals. So many of the community benefits I'm seeing seem to be one-time cash payments rather than ongoing. The community benefits of increased transfer, uh, transient, transient occupancy taxes and sales taxes will be uneven, and they'll go into our general fund, not our affordable housing fund. Uh, so. How about we keep all of our public land and charge ground rent? Because once we privatize our community assets, we never benefit from them again in, in the same way. Um, in this way, we can keep our, our community asset and benefit from them in different ways. Also, just a comment. Publicly accessible doesn't mean it's not the same thing as public, like a library um, or a public restroom. So we saw a little bit of that in the discretion between what's in the letter about a public restroom and then some sort of equivocating on it. So I've always, with this project, I've always been a little concerned about this publicly accessible thing. Like things that are publicly accessible are usually accessible to me because I have a certain amount of privilege and disposable income. They're not accessible to everyone, generally, in reality. Um, I'd also like to see this be a union hotel, since our only union option right now is the Dream Inn, uh, which is not affordable for many local people or organizations. Um, even the Democratic Central Committee uh, couldn't afford to use it this year for their annual event. So we need more competition and more options for our community. We also need those good wages and labor protections for our workers. Um, and while I'm on that track, it's another opportunity to bring up a citywide community workforce agreement uh, for building this project to um, bring together all the different community needs we have, including for uh, projects to be built by skilled and local workforce. Thanks. Thank you for your comments. Hi. My name is Natalie Goff, and um, I'm concerned about the um, parking in this hotel. Um, hotels have 3 p.m. check-in times usually. And um, these elevators are going to be carrying cars up and down. That takes time. And I was looking at the design, and it looks like there are three valet parking spaces. So if there are only three places where cars can come in, where's everybody else going to line up? 
it's um, on a Friday afternoon, and the real estate developer mentioned Fourth of July. What, where are those cars going to line up if, if the hotel is full? So um, also, uh, Front Street is only two lanes wide. I don't understand where, where are these cars going to go? Are they going to take numbers? Are you going to hand out buzzers? I don't get it. Um, I've parked in elevator parking lots in San Francisco, and it takes 20 minutes to get your car back. It takes 20 minutes sometimes to park. Um, so I'm just wondering how this is really going to work. I don't think it's working workable to carry cars three stories down into a basement and carry them back up. And um, I don't think people are going to be taking the bus to Santa Cruz to go to this hotel. I think they're all going to be taking, bringing their cars here. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Gretchen Riley. I've lived about 20 years here in downtown Santa Cruz in an apartment. It's uh, affordable to a senior if you live properly. I haven't got but one car that I use maybe six times a year. I walk everywhere all over town. I really love seeing the different environments and so forth. And I've kind of cherished all the old things for a long time. In fact, uh, there are many beautiful historic properties around. But modern things are kind of nifty. There's a lot of things going on. People love to gather in these places. I like to drink coffee, so I go to almost every place in town, and this would be fun. The other thing for me is I have family and friends, and they have a hard time finding a place to stay. And when they do, they're not in town. They're out of town, and they would have to come park downtown. This way, they could just be here and not have to roam. And I don't know, maybe they'd like to roam. But anyway, I like having a place where I could say, hey, there's this place in town, and you could be right there, and you could enjoy the town. So for me, just as a resident and enjoying my town and not knowing all the details of making it all perfect for everybody, uh, it looks pretty good to me. And I'd like to see it happen, just from me and family and friends who could come enjoy the town more and be more vigorous and would bring much more excitement and activity. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Would anybody else like to address the commission this evening? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and return to, uh, to the commission. Um, for starters, um, would the developer uh, or the applicant care to provide any rebuttal to any comments made um, through public comment, you're welcome to do so now. Well, I won't call it a rebuttal, but I had a few comments. Um, I, too, share the need and the understand the huge need for more affordable housing downtown. Those of you who know me know that I've been involved in a lot of affordable housing projects my entire career. Um, Santa Cruz has done more than most communities and will continue to do more than most communities, but there's more to be done. And we, as a hotel operator, would love to have more affordable housing. We would love for people to live close enough to here to work to, so they don't have to drive these horrendous commutes from Watsonville or Los Banos, or Salinas. And we. this is a need of all employers in Santa Cruz. If anybody talks to people who employ people in Santa Cruz, this is a universal thing that even people with very, who are, give, who, who are fortunate enough to have high paying jobs can't afford to move here. And this has been something, and a little bit on my soapbox, but I'm gonna say it anyway. It's, this has been a problem for 50 years in this community. We're only just now coming to grips with it in the last maybe five or 10 years. We need all types of housing, and downtown is the place to do it. And we certainly started that process and will continue. Thank you. Thank you. Would staff care to provide any comment on public comment?
we're available for any questions that you may have. Thank you. So, uh, okay. Commissioner Dan. Thank you. I guess Michael's making me go first. Commissioner Paul Hammond. <laughs> Um, I had a question about um, how many employees approximately, I mean, it's just a ballpark of how many employees, how many employees um, will the hotel employ? My, my partner is the expert on hotel operator, but I, I think it's about 130-ish. 130. -ish. 130. Um, yeah. And w where will they park? I mean, I was just thinking about this when obviously not, not everyone's going to live in Santa Cruz. Well... We, that's something that's going to have to get resolved for sure. Um, there, we're, we, um, as part of a larger discussion of downtown, you know, this hotel can't solve all of the issues of downtown. It is a parking district. There's public parking, city issues parking. You, as employees, if there's enough parking, they can buy parking, monthly parking. We need to build more parking. My personal opinion is we need to build employee parking for all of downtown, not in the core, some place outside of the core. Leave the public parking primarily for visitors. But this is a long-term process, and we're going to have to solve it. We are benefit that we are across the street from the bus depot. I'm hopeful that people will improve bus service, will encourage people to ride the bus, and those who are fortunate enough to live close enough to ride their bikes can do that, I'm hopeful. But it's an so issue we're going to, I don't have a perfect answer. I'm not, obviously I wouldn't ask you to solve this. This is a more of a, you know, um, general question. But um, what about bus passes for employees? Is that something that the hotel Absolutely. would consider? I don't think we have any problem with that at all. I mean, I understand there's a program right now that's paying for that, but that I don't think is going to, that will end, I think, at some point. So I, I, mean, I think it would be advisable to offer that at least, though I'm sure there'll be folks that have to drive um, anyway. Um, and then, so that, that was my question for you, but I have a couple questions for staff. Um, the first one was this, about the sale of the city-owned parcels. Um, where, is there a, is it proposed that the revenue from that sale go into any particular bucket, or is that proposed to just go into the general, plan, uh, general fund? That's a decision that the council will be making. I mean, I would support asking that it go into the Affordable Housing Fund. Um, if we want to make that recommendation, it seems like a, a logical place for that. And then as far as the $5 per square foot fee for the extra building height, can you just go into a little bit of, uh, I mean, it seemed like, um, and I'm not suggesting this is the case, but my read from the staff report was like, we're still negotiating this, so just let us keep negotiating it. Um, you know, otherwise, I would want to try to help figure that out. But I guess I wanted a sense from you, staff, what, where that, where that conversation is with coastal staff. Sure. I think the biggest issue here is um, what the uh, ultimate contribution is going to be with respect to the low-cost visitor serving accommodations. There is potential that that is a, a very substantial cost, and um, as we work through that, um, you know, we will be looking at, at balancing um, all of the uh, various factors, um, both the low-cost visitor-serving accommodations as well as the um, contributions to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund, and um, looking to um, maximize what um, we as a community receive while also making sure that um, you know, we are not compromising the ability of the project to move forward because you know essentially they're trying to make money right and that's okay they're a business we want them to make money we want them to succeed and they won't build their hotel if they're not going to make money oh, no clearly i understand that <laughs> yeah yeah obviously yeah i know you um, do I'm, yeah. I'm, <laughs> i know you do i just want to want to be clear that, well, that there is I'm that balancing it up act. because what i mean the and maybe i'm the the tone of the staff report may, was suggested to me that something to the effect of this is the minimum i mean over and over it was saying this is the minimum this is the minimum and so to me, that makes me think, oh, we're going we're gonna to move it higher. And so what I'm just trying to understand is mm -hmm. do you want us to help negotiate what that might be, or is this something that, as 
Commission don't bother because we're working it out with Coastal. I think Whatever you decide, we're going to upend anyway. I would say I think that it's challenging to um, make a determination on the Affordable Housing Trust Fund contribution without knowing where the low-cost visitor serving accommodations um, costs are going to land. And I would also say that um, those are also appropriate questions for the applicant. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, and then I just had one other um, one other question about one of the conditions of approval that I just wanted to know where it came from, and it was um, it was with the list of other um, contributions, the Boys and Girls Club, whatever. And then it was it was talking about the requirement to have family suites. And it says something like, is that in there? It says something like um, three family suites with bunk beds. Um, that's very specific to have bunk, to say with bunk beds. I'm just wondering why that is. I anticipate that's because these rooms are, are fairly small and would be challenging to get uh, other types of um, additional beds in there. Again, that I would leave that up to the applicants because um, they can they can speak to that um, intent there. I mean, I guess my inclination is not to be so specific. I understand we want to have rooms for families. I fully and 100 percent support that, though. When you put bunk beds in a room, you're really limiting it also. And so a suite that could also be used for like, you know, a girl's weekend, you know, I wouldn't want to pull that short straw and have to sleep in the bunk bed, you know, if I was so. I mean, I, 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 I think it's great to require some areas, you know, some rooms that a family could, um, could, could, um, could be in, but also not limit it. Sure. I think that's a, a fair uh, point. I mean, because, you know, the design could change um, as they go into building permits, and then um, it, the, it, there, there may be an opportunity to provide some other alternative way in which um, multiple beds could be accommodated. And so I think it would be a fair uh, revision to just you know, put in a, a for example, with, with, for example, bunk beds, mm -hmm. um, something along but, those lines. Uh, yeah, but not require. I mean, right, the way the condition reads now, it, it requires, requires the bunk beds. The bunk beds. Right. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good comment. And I see we have, in response to your questions, a couple of, Matt, did you want to respond to Commissioner Dan's point? Yeah, I want to just make sure we've called your attention to the traffic study that was done, where we do actually go into some good detail on the parking that's provided. Um, 214 stalls provided by the applicant, which is actually more than when we reviewed it. There were only 202 provided then. The average, or the, um, during a weekday, the peak parking demand for a hotel is uh, assumed to be 230 parking stalls. So this proposal is very close to what is sort of expected for hotel um, parking generation. And again, these rates that are in this study come from national averages, not places like Santa Cruz where we have great transit and biking options. And so the issues around parking, I don't see them as substantials. I think people are concerned about. The other piece here is talking about um, in the downtown parking district, we have our Go Santa Cruz program, which I'd be remiss not to promote. Um, comes with a bus pass included, paid for by the parking in the area and other sorts of transportation demand management programs that help people give up their automobile when they work downtown. And those are excellent. Um, but if you have a family and you're, you're, I mean, I think we just have to be realistic about that some people just aren't able to not have a car, and we have to be able to accommodate that. Um, and so areas where we can require parking, I think we have to require parking. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And did you want to respond to the question about the family designed rooms? Did, did you want to? I, mean, I feel like we solved that? it by taking out the bunk bed requirement. language okay, requirement, taking allowing for bunk beds, okay. but not requiring. I, so I'm okay. All right. Okay. Commissioner Pohamus. 
Thank you, Chair Conway. Um, can we go in um, project plans number three to A5.09 that deals with the street delivery and trash pickup? I'm sorry, the, the plan, you're looking uh, for a certain set? A5.09 in project plans three. So that is the seventh page, it looks like. What was it again? Sorry, A5. Oh, 09, two more. Oh, oh, 09, sorry, okay. Got it. Okay. So what I see from the schedule uh, projected trash collection is that there's three days of waste, and I think I read there was five days of recycle, and then two days of compost. So a lot of, uh, you know, big trash collection going on pretty much all days of the week. And then there's also deliveries for, say, the coffee shop and whatever restaurant takes up the tenant space on the ground floor and then also stocking the bars and restaurants and all these. So there's going to be a lot of pickup and delivery, right? Is there any sort, uh, and from what I can see in the plans is, and, you know, not an expert at refuse collection. But this seems to me to be a pretty big obstruction, depending on the time of day, right? Um, so I guess I'm just interested in hearing from maybe staff, maybe the developer on, is there some sort of idea in terms of delivery schedules or <coughs> anything like that? Because it just seems like there's this is just going to be a very busy part of the project in a very narrow street with... <laughs> a big residential development next door and yeah if there's a warriors game or something like that going on like can you just talk about that a little bit just it just seems like a very busy situation so yeah we, we spent a lot of time on this as downtown densifies we're going to become a more urban place so these kind of issues will come up more and more we spent a lot of time with the city's uh, utility department and our consultant thinking about this but the short answer to your question is most of the deliveries will occur at night, clearly, when we're, you know, because we're going to, um, uh, from, from our delivery point of view, um, minimize semis and use smaller trucks to the extent possible. Um, the city, of course, picks up the refuge, recycling, um, uh, food waste, all those things. So. They'll they'll schedule it, but normally those schedules are, you know, the pickups are very early in the morning. Uh, with our with the the staff moving bins onto the street, moving them back into uh, the, the locations in the that are pointed out in the building. So um, it's we're as we densify these are the kind of issues that will come up this is a chif very difficult site that way it's a great site but it's only got one access right you don't only have there's no back alley there's no side street everything that comes into that building is coming in and off of front street and so um you know it's 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 uh you know this these are issues that come up in other urban places more often and we're just kind of it's a challenge bringing those and yeah i'm just saying those it's a challenge and it's doable. It's done many places. It just is a little different than what we've done here before. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments? Uh, Commissioner Thompson. Um, hi, I'm, uh, I, I don't know that I've got questions so much as uh, okay. this, uh, this is the time I'm, for comments. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to comment um, Good. Uh, because I think this is really a remarkable piece of architecture. Um, and um, uh, I, I really appreciate the fact that it's all one color, that it hasn't been jazzed up with patches of different primary colors. Um, I think it's very handsome. But I also think it's really uh, well thought out uh, functionally. Um, uh, I, I think that the notion of putting a, a lot of energy into the rooftop um, uh, uh, area is right on target. Um, it's um, about time, quite frankly, that we had a building that took advantage of its uh, location and um, our, our weather and um, made the roof an outdoor space as well. Um, uh, I, I think uh, the, uh, the aspect of the project that uh, I don't think has gotten um, 
uh, enough uh, attention in the discussion yet is the um, uh, the the improvements uh, and connection to the river um, because this is the first one um, after a, you know a, a hundred years of downtown development we've finally gotten around to actually uh, saying gosh this is a potentially really beautiful place why don't we turn it into a park along the river and that's what they've done they've turned it into a private park um, uh, served with um, food and beverage and um, a, a wonderful place to be um, uh, a, a wonderful east facing place for um, breakfast on the river um, I think the arrangements of how the, uh, the pedestrian areas and bicycle areas are, are separate but integrated is right on target. Um, uh, the, the Paseo um, actually um, was, uh, uh, idea was first um, uh, came up when we were recovering from the earthquake um, because all of a sudden there were spots where there wasn't a building along the river nice. and the, the, the notion of um, then aligning the paseos with the streets so that if you were walking down a street, you could walk right to the river. And uh, this is the first one, but I hope it is, um, uh, becomes a new part of the identity of downtown, which is that we have a, a, a downtown that literally connects to the river. Um, it, it, again, it just astounds me that it's happening for the first time. Um, and I think that the design of the Paseo is um, um, first rate. I was uh, um, concerned that when the Paseos got uh, developed, because they are in our plan, that they would be 30 feet wide. Um, uh, this is wide enough to uh, be a, a, a real break in the the rhythm of the buildings, it's uh, <coughs> big enough to actually be an active space that uh, uh, people don't just pass through, but buildings open out onto. Um, and uh, so I think that that's uh, tremendously important. Um, uh, I, I, just to uh, maybe uh, real quickly go through some of the things that have been raised here. Um, the uh, the uh, London plane trees that are, were uh, built in uh, Pacific Avenue after the earthquake were 24-inch box trees. They looked good day one. Uh, they look better now. Um, uh, but um, uh, I don't see any problem with us uh, having um, a similar kind of urban forest that we've already accomplished. Uh, we, we proved to ourselves we can do this. Um, uh, I wanted to uh, actually go back to the parking ratio one more time because while I was listening to folks talk about this, I was thinking about the, the, um, uh, the travel I've done in the last five years. And um, I haven't ever brought my car with me to the hotel. Um, <laughs> it, it just didn't ever seem like a good idea. Um, and so, um, uh, oftentimes, I was in cities where I hadn't arrived in a car, so it wasn't like I had to get rid of one. Um, but I think that um, uh, that, uh, if I look into the crystal ball of what's the future like, um, I think the, there is more and more reason to think that folks will not bring their private car to the hotel with them, um, uh, that they will... Um, uh, get to the San Jose airport and realize that uh, Santa Cruz is a place where you don't have to have a car to have a good time. They'll um, uh, take a, a limo or an Uber to get to Santa Cruz, and they won't ever need a parking space. And, and I'm not being um, um, ridiculously optimistic about that. I just, like I said, I, I look back at the travel that I've done in the last five years, and Almost every time, I didn't bring my car with me, um, uh, and in part because I was going to places where I didn't want a car, <laughs> you know. Um, and that strikes me as Santa Cruz in our future is going to be a wonderful place where you think, hey, you know, I had a good time and I didn't even have to worry about where to park the car. Um, so um, I, I'm, I trust the, the transportation engineers getting this probably right. Um, uh, let's see, what else was it here? Um, 
Uh, yeah, I, I, I think we can't underscore the fact that what we're getting is privately developed parks, one in the Paseo and one along the river. Um, uh, two um, items that we've never had before, um, and I can't imagine how we would ever have created them if we had to do it out of city revenues, uh, certainly not at the level of finesse that is being proposed with this project. Um, uh, so, um, uh, let's see here. Oh, the, uh, the last one was um, uh, on the subject of um, the need for public restrooms um, uh, for folks who are not hotel or restaurant guests. Um, across the street is going to be the transit center. And the transit center is exactly the right place to have public restrooms because it's part of what a public facility delivers. Um, so I'm not at all nervous about the fact that there aren't public restrooms designed into this project. Um, uh, we've, I think we got that one covered. So um, boy, if we can get this quality of architecture in the rest of our riverfront, um, uh, you know, wow, that would be fantastic um, to have a. a, a, a a, a new park along the river that's uh, almost a quarter of a mile long uh, sounds like this is a good way to start. So. Thank you. That's it. Appreciate that. Other comments? Yes, Commissioner McKelvey. I'd like to second or third everything that Commissioner Thompson just said uh, and many of the comments here already. I think that, you know, in terms of our sustainability goals as a community, um, we want people out of their cars. We want them to come to this place from the transit center that is being created. We want uh, people living downtown in the new, newly approved affordable housing that's you know really coming to the fore now. It's not. I don't think it's something that. Uh, I don't think it's just hopelessly optimistic. I think. I think we're trying to provide that, and we're. I think we're. You know, with arena success in the last cycle, I think we're, you know, we're moving that way. Um, talking to the parking for just a minute, I know that, uh, do we still have all the same parking reduction measures available? Um, the employee parking program, the expanded bicycle or substitute bicycle parking, and also complimentary time of use. Good, right? <clears throat> so we, we do. It's got less uh, applicability under AB two hundred nine seven. Yes, but I, I'm yeah. and and forgive me. I was thinking that because it's mixed use, we still have limited ability to affect it. But if we can affect the, the hotel, I would encourage the applicant to look at an employee parking program that is literally like combination of uh, bus passes. Of uh, you know, uh, I know that. For a while, Ecology Action did this program where they would, you pay a fee per year per employee and you would, they would be able to avail themselves of a loan for a new bicycle, uh, support if they had problems riding home, they get a flat tire or something, people would come and help them, you know, get home. Um, they're just, a, I think there are a lot of approaches that we could suggest and I don't know about demand to, uh, you know, make this model work and demonstrate that it's a it's a real uh, it's an achievable solution because I think the amenities are fantastic. I think that the the public benefits, if uh, you know, assuming they're all going to pan out the way that they're presented, I I think it's a great proposal that way. But it does depend on some things, you know, meshing and getting put together for you know in terms of logistics. So. Thank you for your comments. Uh, anybody else have comments? Yes, Commissioner Kennedy. Um, I've got a, just a few. So I wanted to appreciate staff's efforts to put those lighting conditions in here. They're like all over the place. And I wonder if actually collapsing them back into like one more succinct one. I was thinking of the lighting designer being like, oh man, I gotta go through. They're all listed here, 27B and da 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 da. But I really appreciate like, putting that in there. This is the 
one of the top things we heard in the downtown plan was like, what about light spillage and these huge buildings? And like, and those are just reasonable concerns. Mm -hmm. So keep at it, tighten them up. And I think uh, with the commitment to a good lighting design, that problem will not be a problem. I'm glad you brought up the earthquake, Matthew. I was 13 at the time. But uh, getting the Maple Street alleyway, which my memory is it's a historical alley that was there, don't ask me what year, and then was closed down, that is huge. Like, that's a huge public benefit. It's enormous. And I started in with a bunch of, like, picky comments about this rendering of the Paseo and being like, well, what happens if there's homeless people living there and we have to put gates up and, you know, all these things we talked about during that plan, and it'll work itself out. So um, I do want to say, like I put up the rendering on sheet A015, which I think is just a few away from where you are. And uh, like Commissioner Dan mentioned with the fully grown trees, I was like, oh man, when you take away the fake people and the fake trees, what's left here? So I just trust staff and the applicant to make this plaza as beautiful as possible. I'm not going to condition it. It's in everyone's interest for that space to work. But I do want to highlight again just all the different users and all the different people and all those delicate interactions. And uh, a lot of that's operational. Um, like I'm concerned about that tiny weird retail space never being rented. But hey, you know, we do what we can. It's next to the dumpster and the electrical room. so. I'm sure it's going to fly off the shelf. Anyway, enough comments. Uh, this is a great project. <laughs> okay. And um, to respond to one more thing, um, this is part of the overall economic development plan for downtown, in my eyes. And so though it's not like we're requiring an affordable unit in this hotel, this hotel is doing plenty to contribute money and economic prosperity the whole project, which I think helps everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else have comments? Now I have a couple of comments I'd like to make. Yeah? Okay. Um, so first of all, I'm delighted to hear that you like the architecture. I thought it was pretty, but I don't know anything. So um, I'm really glad to hear that. Um, another thing is it's um, ever, ever since this plan first came forward, you know, it's a truism if you're trying to build anything that you can't make more land. And what I really love about this project is it's making more land. And um, I love what it's doing to activate the river. I think it is just, um, you know, all of these years later, all of these decades of conversation, um, and we're finally happening. It's really, and it's a really big change for our community and a really good one. Um, and I know we've talked about all of the ways we use that river and its problems, and we've talked about it a lot, but I'm really excited about that, and I think it looks like it's been treated um, really, really well. The other thing I'd like to say is, you know, again, I've been scrambling for housing sites since 1983, um, and um, every site can't be housing. This site shouldn't be housing, and what it is doing in terms of as many people have said, economic vitality and supporting our dear struggling downtown, um, bringing people downtown to eat at the restaurants, shop in the stores. This is a great location to not have a car. I mean, it's just, you know, you can walk to the beach, you can walk downtown, you can, um, you know, really, really enjoy it. I loved it. everything that was, was said about that as well. Um, I do have um, uh, questions, and I don't think now is necessarily the time. I understand that things are still a little bit fluid, but supporting low-cost accommodation is one of is a it's a fundamental tenet, and um, exactly how this project um, is is going to play a role in that. Um, I know it's moving around a little bit, um, and I have to say I was you know curious about. Um, you know, I've spent some, some time working on a commercial impact fee um, going towards affordable housing because, you know, a project like this does um, engender a higher need for affordable housing because it has all these jobs, glad to have the jobs, they don't pay well, we don't have the right housing fit for them. Um, and that is a really complicated answer. Um, you know, we're not going to be taking on 
um, a study to establish nexus and proportionality. That's, this isn't the time for it. Um, and again, we, we don't want to do to this project um, what we've done to prevent housing for so many decades, which is just to keep burdening it with more and more requirements. That said, I do think that um, having it make its contributions um, is really fair. Um, and I think they need to be done at a fair level. I don't feel like I can work that out right now. Um, the staff, the Coastal com um, Commission, and you know what's going to be coming to the council, I think, is a fine place for it to, um, you know, to keep moving along. I really liked some of the ideas, like the um, bus passes for employees. Um, I mean, that's just an opportunity, you know, better than building the parking lot that we, I know, we do need. Um, to do that. Um, um, I guess that was my, uh, most of my comments. What did I, what did I miss? Um, I think that's, that's enough for me. Yes. I had one other thing I wanted mm -hmm. to add just because it came up in a, an email today about concern of um, uh, the uh, ramp in the Paseos right. um, um, being, um, uh, I, I actually have some experience in this having uh, gone through this design process. The the whole point of the ramp is to make them handicapped accessible. Right. Well, that is such a slow ramp right. that it's not a, a challenge to ride a bicycle mm -hmm. um, uh, on, uh, at that uh, percent grade. Um, and the, the, uh, the drawings that we actually saw today have the, the, the turn in it wide enough so that um, it, it really works. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think. Um, that's worth keeping in mind mm -hmm. that um, I think we can expect people to actually ride their bicycles um, uh, through the Paseo to get up to the top. And, I'm planning on it. And my <laughs> sense is that it's going to be safe and mm -hmm. um, that there won't be a, a conflict between pedestrians and bicycles that um, uh, make the Paseo um, less than it, it could be. And that's partly because it's 60 feet wide. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think it's going to be a lot harder to pull this trick off in a, in a 30 foot wide or 40 foot wide for sale. Mm -hmm. so just wanted to kind of say some reassuring things about that okay. aspect. Thank you. Okay, any further comments or is anybody ready to make a motion? Um, I can make a motion. I have a couple comments. Mm -hmm. um, so this project, um, I'm the appointee of the fourth district, so this project is in my district. Um, I'm a 22-year 22 res 22 resident of downtown, so when I think about things going into downtown, I look at it as, is this going to enhance my neighborhood or not enhance my neighborhood? And this project, without a doubt, is going to enhance my neighborhood. It's, I love that you <laughs> spoke highly of the design, because I'm just an amateur, but I thought the design was absolutely beautiful. Um, it's, I think it's one of the best design projects we've had in Santa Cruz in many years, and I hope that as your architect picked out some, some of our architectural gems as inspiration, I think the, the Neary building, the octagon, the clock tower, and the, um, the lighthouse um, at Steamers, that this building will be seen as an inspiration for the next um, buildings that come along. Um, I don't think that we've been wholly successful in the past with design, and um, I won't name names, but um, when I'm coming from the east side across the bridge into Santa Cruz, I will be uh, grateful to have this as my view um, coming back into the west side. So I'll just say that. Um, so kudos to your architect. Um, really nice job. Um, so... I also just wanted to add that there was some talk about um, our housing production in Santa Cruz. And, you know, I just want to say I've worked in the Monterey Bay region for a long time, and I'm familiar with what other communities are doing to house with housing, and no one is building, no other city or jurisdiction is building housing like this city is. Um, both affordable housing, we have a 100% affordable project two blocks from here, another one that's proposed to go in with the library. We have hundreds of units um, that have already been approved to go in downtown, so um, no community is doing as well as we are with, with both with 100% affordable projects and market rate. So I just want to put that on the record. Um, 
I also love the rooftop amenities, and I, I, I don't mind um, the extra height if it's greenery on the roof, so I'll just say that I'm not worried about that. I think that that enhances the roof. Um, and so with that, I'm happy to move the staff recommendation with, um, I think we had a couple of changes with the conditions of approval to remove the reference to bunk beds. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, yeah, that little one. Commissioner Kennedy, did you have one too? Yes, yeah, adding the words paint materials and transitions. Right. That's adding right. the two words. And that was uh, condition remember. number 23 to add the, the highlighted words here materials and transitions after colors and before the word shall. Are there any other? Suggested changes by commissioners? Um, well, sorry. Uh, so I have, I have a motion on the table. And with, a, with a couple of changes. These changes. While, while that's still proposed, are there any other changes so that we don't have to make amendments? Can I ask you a question about yes, a change? Um, the buzzer. So was that was for the entire condition, or was it just the buzzer? Good was question. it just a question? It's really a question for Commissioner Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Or are we just raising I it remember to staff to was going to take a look at that at the process. building permit process, yeah. but um, I think we can just leave it with staff. Okay. Good question, though. I will second uh, the maker of the motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. And Lee, what have you got to say? <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I would add uh, if you are interested in removing that uh, condition about the, the buzzer or beacon, whatever it may be. Um, you may want to include a recommendation in your motion that says um, with some flexibility there so that uh, then we can wordsmith that um, going into the uh, city council hearing and um, provide that flexibility so our transportation manager can look at it and see if there's something that isn't going to disturb the folks across the street um, and um, remove it if it seems superfluous. So are you suggesting a friendly amendment that would um, include some language that uh, has examination of that um, prior to going to council, it, something like that? I can't personally make friendly amendments, but, but yes, I mean, if one of you were to do so. I see, I see um, Matt's here. Do you have a suggestion? Maybe switching shall to may could give us a little bit of easy flexibility. Can we do it the other way and just strike it? And then you guys add it back in if you really want it back. You know, it's a, little, it's a little bit okay, bigger to okay. take it out as the as the commission. I, I like the idea myself of softening it or or asking yep. for some more consideration, yep. taking into account the fact that it is going to be its thing, and uh, we have some concerns about it. Maybe the buzzer. It doesn't need to be a buzzer. It could be a less, you know, impactful noise. May include yeah. an automated warning buzzer. Could also maybe other also lights or something. Maybe there's another way to do it. Um, it does this work for you? This to works have for it me. From, well, does it work for yeah, you? Yeah, that's really fine. Yeah. I'm just going back to its support cushion. There's tons of room. You don't need anything. That's I, just my opinion. I kind of agree. Um, and I would just say make it more broad scope. You know, I, I the word buzzer. I, I say, you know, I'm thinking the basketball game, you know, <laughs> don't want to hear that. <laughs> but um, I could see a, a slightly different sound and a visual cue or something that's very localized for the people on that sidewalk. But I'm, I'm in agreement that the, the goal is to have the enunciation and, uh, and the warning, but I don't think we have to prescribe mm -hmm. what it's going to be. An automated warning cue or other mechanism sign. I mean, it already says buzzer kinda, sign yeah, or other mechanism. Say, it's fine. So, it's fine. so or maybe other that's mechanism enough. that kind of leaves it pretty wide open. Yeah, good. If, yeah, yeah. I kind of like that. Um, yes. Uh, well, no, you don't finish the thought. I, I was um, just going to mention that uh, Commissioner Dan had a question about um, the bus passes for employees and the applicant had agreed to do that but that is not a condition right now so mm -hmm. um with the applicant being amenable to that that could be something that the commission is interested in adding as well adding as a condition of approval you know how i hate that 
<laughs> this is a good one, though. I'm just putting it out there because it was part of the conversation and it, it didn't show up in, in this. Nothing. And so Thanks it's sorry. the commission's discretion. I just wanted to. Could we hear flag from the it. applicant on the um, practicality of that? And my, my objection is usually about hanging new conditions of approval off like a. And I appreciate that. I, I honestly can't tell you because I don't know exactly what it would cost, how many employees would avail themselves of it, all these details. But I would think we probably can work. Our intent is certainly to find a way to encourage folks to use the bus. Mm -hmm. And one way to do that is to make parking hard. But we, we, we want to, we, I, I would imagine that maybe we can work something out. I don't know if I can commit. sit here tonight and commit. Right. But I would, I think that it's not a significant issue. Mm -hmm. um, can you think of some language? Well, I mean, I guess at this point, um, there is a program right now that offers it. So, um, I mean, I would just suggest that this council, um, we could just leave this for the council to figure yeah. out at this point. Okay. Can I make a small mm -hmm. suggestion? Sure. Um, this is a small issue and potentially a friendly amendment, but this would be a way to maybe eliminate the, what were they even called, the tower lookers or whatever they were, the little yeah. things, and maybe reallocate those to bus passes? Um, yeah, I mean, I, the tower viewer, I, I would even be amenable to eliminating that entire condition and just um, providing binoculars, which I think is probably easier. I, yeah, my one concern about that is that when people are stealing the pillows, they'll just throw the binoculars in there. <laughs> Unless they're really crummy binoculars, and then you might as well have a tower. Oh, I don't know. I've never been to a hotel with binoculars, but that would that's my first inclination is like if they're nice, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to steal them. Michael. Peter <laughs> Kennedy went into the weeds, but the public cannot access those binoculars where they could access something cool. Oh, that's, that's true. Cool. No, you're right. You're right. No, you're right. You're so right. the intent is to provide like a public I, thing. I get you. I get you. Why don't we that's do my, this? Yeah. Why, could you maybe staff in the staff report to the council include a paragraph discussing these items that the commission brought up but did not resolve? So what? Way to solve it. Um, Let's see, is that, um, Eric, are you comfortable with resolving it in that yeah, way? Yeah, we can certainly um, summarize your discussion. Okay, yes. I, if Mr. Butler. I was just going to note uh, yeah. our transportation manager, Matt Starkey, just alerted me to the fact that based on their location, the employees will all get free bus passes. Because they're right across the street from like the bus Like forever station. or just for right now? That is part of the Santa Cruz GO program. I will Okay. Our, just to hear the hard question, Matt. Okay. Thanks for our questions. <laughs> yeah, as long as uh, people keep parking downtown and paying a fair price, we can keep paying for that program. Okay. See, we need parking after all. There we go. Right? That's Got fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, non-issue and or issue resolved. So, on condition seventy-five, I wonder if we should just give fifty grand to the hostel, and I, fifty grand to the Boys and Girls Club. I the council can fix that. I'm tempted to say hundred. But come on, this is an expensive hotel. I should disclose, like, one of my best friends manages the hostel, and <laughs> it is the greatest thing you've ever seen. Go there, hang out. It's doing more to get people who don't have money to the coast than, like, literally anything you can imagine, I think. People shower there. It's just great. So I, I don't know how you feel about that. I would advocate for eliminating the tower viewers and reallocating that towards something else. If that's the hostel situation, if that's, I don't know how the maker of the motion feels, but. Um, I'm happy to, I'm happy to include that. Okay, then I'll, I'll move to eliminate the tower viewers um, and reallocate that funding into condition 75. However, that's done. We can also just kind of leave that open-ended for council. But I want to make it like fifty grand instead of fifteen. <laughs> okay, not, not three thousand dollars. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, one of I think the process maybe is one of you can make a friendly amendment and be specific about what you want included. Right. That would be so that Tess can you. figure it out. On. Mm -hmm. So would you accept a friendly amendment to uh, change seventy-five A to an amount of fifty thousand dollars, 
and 75B to an amount of $50,000. Yes. I think if that gets you out of a... And if the second uh, agrees... School, then, give me a break. Yeah. Yes. Cool. A reminder, these are recommendations. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. and they could all go away right. if it's appealed. Mm -hmm. Though I would beg the developers not to, please. <laughs> Any further so uh, just so I uh, clarify, you, you were recommending what, what you're recommending changing the amount. Oh, uh, yeah, seventy five A. They're both becoming fifty thousand dollars. That's a recommendation. Yep. Okay. Go big or go home, Pete. Well, I'm I'm increasing <laughs> the incentive to not appeal. The bigger okay. that number is, mm -hmm. like if we're going to play this deceitful game, right? Any, okay, so the um, maker of the motion and the second have both accepted that. Yes, Commissioner McKelvey. Just one question. When we call them tower viewers, we're talking about something that's out in the public realm. It's not in a room, right? right? It's out in the public side. So, so people can look down and... Yeah. Uh, what I assumed it was, mm -hmm. actually. What is it? It's a so, thing you look through? Yeah, it's one of those things that you have on the wharf. Oh, cool. yeah. You yeah, put a quarter in and you look. Let's put yeah, people yeah. down on the levee. Yeah. Stop yeah. looking. We, we spent a lot right. of time yeah. hearing about how building taller buildings along the river was actually going to be good for wildlife mm -hmm. in the river um, because it's creating more shadow and it's going to help return the river to some better balance. And so I assume that we're going to be looking for, you know, Salmon swimming <laughs> up the river. That's what they're going to hope that's, springs that's eternal. What I <laughs> Steelhead, you know. Okay. Um, okay, so we have some proposed language. Is it done? Are we ready to go? Okay. I'm not clear about the tower viewer. Did you say that you wanted to amend it to take it out? They want it gone? Yeah, take it out. Eliminate the tower viewer, okay. increase the um, amounts given to the Santa Cruz Hostel Society, and then also the Boys and Girls Club from 15 to 50 and 25 to 50. And it's too bad the likely appealers are not here anymore. Oh, well. um, so um, with, with that, um, any more discussion on the motion as amended? With that, I'll call for a roll call vote. Commissioner Dan? Yes. Kennedy? Yes. McKelvey? Yes. Paul Hamus? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Sir Conway? Yes. With that, the motion passes. And um, thank you. Um, and we have a little bit more business. Thank you, everybody. Um, so moving on, do we have any information items this evening? And thank you, everybody, for coming. <laughs> If, if you're not going to stay for the <laughs> wind down. Yeah, just one item to report on okay. the um, the 40 unit project at, on High Street, 900 High, uh, behind Peace United Church. Uh, the council heard two appeals on Tuesday and uh, denied both appeals, and so the project was approved. Um, your approval, the, your recommendation for approval last November was upheld essentially. Um, they did add some conditions around geology and uh, tree protection to um, address some of the appellant's concerns, but that, that is an approved project now. Um, okay. And Eric, I heard that like the revised conditions basically satisfied the neighbors. Was that the case? Yeah, we did get like some word to that effect, of, yeah, okay. that they, they, they uh, did appreciate the, the change in the language, yeah. That's my impression was like we're almost there, almost there. That's great. Thank you. So looking at the schedule, uh, your next meeting is March 7th, and we have a use permit um, involving a retail cannabis use on Mission Street. And that's, that's the only thing scheduled right now. OK. Um, very good. And um, I believe we, we don't have any subcommittee or advisory bodies right now, and no items referred to future agendas. And with that, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you go.